Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. During the declared emergency, Committee of Adjustment for two public hearings are being conducted by electronic means to WebEx, an online digital platform, and streamed on the Toronto City Planning YouTube channel. These measures are necessary to comply with physical distancing requirements and in-person attendance limitations. My name is Isaac Laluz, and I will be chairing this hearing. Panel members participating this afternoon via WebEx and can be seen and heard are Ms. Atarodi, Ms. Bart Ms. Uh, Sankar, Mr. Bartolo, and Mr. Klassen. City staff will be assisting us throughout the day, uh, moderate, uh, including moderating the WebEx platform. And today is Mr. Dan Antonacci, who is the Deputy Secretary Treasurer, Brandon Klapp, and uh, Jenny Kotas. Participants who, are, who have registered in advance will be able to make their presentations to the committee using the said WebEx. Anyone wishing to view the hearing may do so by watching on YouTube. These participants will be connecting either by their computer, a phone, a tablet app, or by telephone. All participants will automatically be muted on entry. When your item is called, each participant will be unmuted by the moderator one person at a time. Only the committee members will be participating by video. Any registered speaker will be participating by audio only. We ask that you also mute your device until you call on to speak. For those waiting online to speak, please make sure you call with the telephone number you originally registered with. If you call with a different number, you will not be able to speak on the item. Regarding the land acknowledgement, we acknowledge the land we are meeting on is the traditional territory of many nations, including the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Anishinaabe, the Chippewa, the Haudenosaunee, and the Wendat peoples, and is now home to many diverse First Nations, Inuit and Métis peoples. We also acknowledge that Toronto is covered by Treaty 13 with the Mississaugas of the Credit. <coughs> In accordance with section 45 and 53 of the Planning Act 1990 as amended, this meeting of the Committee of Adjustment of the City of Toronto is called to order. The Committee of Adjustment considers applications for variances from the provision of the zoning bylaw, permission to extend or alter legal non-conforming uses, and consents to sever property to create new lots. Anyone in attendance today who wants a copy of the decision of the committee on an application must submit a, a request by email. And please ensure that you include your name, address, and email address because Committee of Adjustment and the TLAB will be sending notifications and appeal updates by email only. If you do not agree with the decision of the committee, decisions may be appealed to the Toronto local appeal body known as TLAB or in some limited circumstances, to a new tribunal called Ontario Land Tribunal. Appeal instructions are set out at the bottom of the decision of the committee. The hearing procedure this afternoon will be as follows. I will call each item in the order listed on the agenda. Where an application is uncontested, the agent or applicant will proceed with their presentation if required. The committee may ask questions and or take the matter directly for a decision. Each speaker, including the applicant agent, will be given a maximum of five minutes to address the committee. I will comment when the five-minute mark is reached. When addressing the committee, please clearly state your name and address, and please remember to confine your remarks to the matters outlined in the application. The applicant or agent will proceed first and will make the presentation to the committee. Please note that the committee may not entertain revisions to proposals at the hearing today. The committee may decide to defer the application if substantially revised to ensure the revised application is accurate and that all those entitled to receive a notice are informed of the changes. Then individuals either in support or in opposition to the application, will be invited to speak. Committee members may ask questions of each speaker at the end of their presentation. When all speakers are finished, the applicant agent has the chance to address only those issues that were raised by the speakers. 
This will mark the end of the discussion and the application will be taken to committee for a decision. Now, we have a number of, uh, before we start the application themselves, we have uh, a number of um, couple um, applications for deferral, the request for deferral, application number 22, 22, which is uh, 15 Bakersfield Street, application number 22. And here we have the agent Jonathan Benskovsky. Uh, sorry, that's 22. That's Iraj. Iraj Narolaji. Are, are you there? Iraj? Yes. Uh, okay. Can you hear me? Yes, good afternoon. Can you please yes. can you good please afternoon. state your name and address for us? Well, I'm actually, my name is Nima Ashbury. I'm the, on the behalf of the Raj Nasr Lahi. His address is uh, 15 Bakersfield Street, North York, Ontario. Okay. And then, uh, yes. Okay, thank you. So we have here the, um, the application uh, is, you're requesting, they're requesting a deferral. And uh, we have one more speaker here. Um, before we make a decision. So could you please give us a short uh, discussion why you want a deferral? Yes, uh, the, Mr. Iraj Nasrallah, he had to leave Canada like last uh, last month due to emergency issue, like a family issue. And then uh, he's gonna be back in by end of this month. Yeah. So that's why he asked me to show the up on behalf the owner, of them. Yeah, the owner wants it. Yeah, I read the letter that the owner wants to be present and he's out of the country. Okay. All right. Yeah. So so let's hear the um, let's hear the um, the other speakers, see what they have to say. Jack Saskiewicz, are you there? Jack Saskiewicz, are you there? Mr. Moderator, is uh, is the uh, is the speaker uh, online? Mr. Chair, I'm not sure which item you're referring to. Well, application number 22, 22 number 22 is asking for. My participant, uh, sorry, my participant list for item number 22 only indicates that it's the uh, agent acting for the owner. Okay, so the other one is not here. Okay, this uh, this one was sent later on requesting uh, requesting to attend. So there is nothing now, only the agent. Okay, so the agent is asking for uh, a deferral uh, due to the owner who's out of town, out of the country, and the owner wants to be present, and he's asking for deferral. Do you have any question to the Ms. Sankar? I'll make a motion to defer this application, sine die, to give uh, the owner a chance to return to the country and address uh, this file in person. Thank you. Second, Mr. Uh, Mr. Clarkson, second. All in favor? Okay. Sir, your, the application is deferred, sine die, and check with the staff when it's coming back, okay? Sure. Thank you very much. Okay. The next one, next one is item number 26, 26, which is uh, 10 Stainer Avenue. And we have here um, Jonathan Benskovsky, are you there? Afternoon, Mr. Chair. Okay, you're back again. Okay, so could you please Repeat your name and address for us so we can move on. Yes, Jonathan Minskowski, 301 Kiwatton Avenue. Okay, and you're asking here for a uh, for a uh, deferral, and um, we have two more speakers here. We'll get them, but tell us the reason why you're asking for deferral. Yes, I was retained uh, at the beginning of last week. I was able to visit the site, take some photos, and submit some photos. Um, I, I'm of the opinion that changes need to be made to what is there. Uh, and basically we're, we're asking for the deferral to consult with the neighbors. I haven't had a chance to reach out. Uh, I'd like to reach out to the neighbors and speak with them about what we can do to alleviate some of the concerns of the neighborhood as a whole. Kim Quash. Mr. Chair, they are not present. 
They're not, okay? Next is Matthew Smith, are you there? Yes, I am. Okay, could you please uh, uh, state your name and address for the records here? Uh, Matthew Smith, and I'm the owner of One Five Romar Crescent. Thank you. So you heard what's going on. The agent is asking for a deferral, which means if we defer it, we will not hear it today, and you'll have to check with the staff when it's coming. You'll be uh, you'll be advised for the next uh, hearing. Are you okay with that? No, I I would like us to have the hearing because I believe that the variances requested are severe. And I don't believe that the neighborhood uh, can tolerate uh, continuing with a charade of uh, variance requests based upon the submissions that I'd like the committee to see today so that those variances could be addressed and refused. Okay. so. So what you're saying is you're against the deferral because you don't want to spread, you don't want to, uh, uh, you want you want the decision to be made fast because of the problems of the variances. Um, as you know, they can't build until they until the, we hear it. But that's what you're saying. So let's see, uh, members, any question to the speaker? Uh, the agent is asking for deferral, and this uh, this gentleman says no, he wants it to be discussed today. Miss Sankar. Yes, uh, thank you, Mr. Chair, for fair judicial process and for the fact that there are also members of the public who were supposed to be here, debutants, that did not make it. I think it is um, kind of wise to have uh, this application deferred uh, so that the agent can work with the community members and those members who were not represented today. And, uh, you know, so I'll put forward a motion to well, uh, before uh, the, yeah, before the motion. So your your this is your uh, your your response to uh, to the thing. But do you have any question for this gentleman? Uh, no question. No. no question. OK, so Mr. Uh, Mr. Benzovsky, Benkovsky, you heard the uh, you heard the agent, uh, the sorry, um, sorry to interrupt. Sorry to interrupt, Mr. Chair. There is one more deputant that wishes to speak to this. Uh, Claudio Sarah registered at the last minute. Oh, okay, I don't have him here. Okay, uh, what's the name? Claudio, what? Claudio Sarah. Sarah, thank you. Hello. Okay, and uh, and the other one didn't show up. The uh, Jonathan, uh, I mean, uh, Kim Squash, no? Correct. Okay. Okay, so Claudio, uh, are you there? Yes, I am. Okay, can you please uh, state your name and address for us? It's Claudio Serra, 12 Banner Avenue. Okay, and uh, you heard what's happening. The agent is asking for deferral, and um, and uh, what you, which means if we defer it, we will not hear the application today. What's your take on this? Well. Well, my take is to refuse the deferral because I've taken time off work today. I'm representing 15 of the residents on the street. Uh, I would hope that the Committee of Adjustment has read the letter that we have submitted already. Uh, lots of preparation has gone into this. This is not a surprise for the applicant. This, these variances stem from stop work orders that date back from 2019. Uh, for Mr. Benkowski to suggest that they didn't have enough time is less than genuine, in my opinion. Um, I'm ready to proceed with my evidence. Okay, thank you. Any question for the speaker? Just question. No questions. Okay, Mr. Benkowski, we're going back. Uh, I'm going to get to the committee, see if the uh, variance, I mean, if the deferral is approved or not. If we refuse the deferral, which means we're going to hear it today, and we will not hear it now, it will come at the time when you're slotted for for the application. So, members, any uh, any take on this <coughs> deferral? Mr. Oh, hold a second. Mr. Benskowski, did you want to say something? Yeah, I, I, I can appreciate the frustration of the neighbors. Um, I was just brought into this at the beginning of last week. So I would like the opportunity to speak to the neighbors. Um, I, I'm not sure the history of, of the owner specifically with them. Um, but I'm now involved in this and I would like the opportunity to speak with them um, of a way to rectify this through making changes that would be satisfactory to everybody. I think that's the main part of the planning process we're involved here is for public involvement and for the public good. 
And I don't think having a hearing uh, after I've been so retained so recently, really without the, the opportunity to speak with them, um, I, I think would be doing a disservice to both the owner as well as the neighbors um, without having any dialogue with them. Okay, so let's see what, uh, what, the, what the members uh, will decide. Uh, Mr. Chair, yeah. I, uh, just the question to the agent. So are you saying that because there's been a change in agents that that is the rationale for requesting a deferral? Well, there's a couple of things involved in that. There's there's some past building permits that I was able to take a look at last week that um, led to some additional questions I had regarding the shed at the back corner. Um, the owner is telling me that it is existing and that it was part of a building permit. Yeah, no, 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 I don't want uh, all that. So, but I'm just trying to understand is the you're indicating that that because there's a change in agent that is why you would like a referral well yeah but i think that goes part and parcel oh, also you. with thank with you. with what i'm looking at changing with the application okay all right miss satarodi question um, um chair no i just have a comment well staff already did their work and we have the report and the neighbors already are, are online and would like to proceed I think it will be fair if we just proceed. Okay, so so th those are comments. And uh, uh, do you have some more question for the agent? No, so can I have a motion please? There is a deferral here on the table. Uh, I need a motion. Mr. Uh, Klassen? Yes, Mr. Shah, thank you. I will move given the discussion we've been having that uh, the request for deferral be rejected. Denied. Thank you. Okay. There is, okay. So there is a there is a motion to deny the deferral. Uh, do you have a, a second? Miss Sankar, second. I'm sorry, Miss Satarodi. Miss Satarodi, second. Sorry. All in favor? Three. Opposed. Miss Sankar is opposing. And the uh, the three had it. So, Mr. Benskovsky, the deferral is the, is uh, denied, and we'll hear the application today. So we'll be hearing it at the slot when it comes back, because right now we're on a different uh, number. Okay. <coughs> so, so we have here the first the first item here on the agenda for this afternoon is number 19, which is 1450 Don Mills Road. And that is the first one for this afternoon. That number 19. And we have here Mr. or Mrs. 19, we have here Mark Condello, are you there? I am Mr. Chair. Okay, can you please repeat your name, <clears throat> your name and address for us? Sure. Uh, good afternoon, Mr. Chair and committee, committee members. Uh, my name is Mark Candelo. I'm a planner at Glen Schnarn Associates. Our address is 10 Kings Bridge Garden Circle, Suite 700, Mississauga, Ontario. Thank you. We have here, this is a uh, to, to build the five uh, self-storage building. We have four variances, forestry condition, but there is a condition from, from the um, from the transportation, not a condition. They're asking for deferral. Can you uh, can you address can you address that, please? Yes, uh, certainly. Um, I, I acknowledge that transportation staff did provide comments on the application and are recommending deferral. Transportation comments relate to the proposed variance, uh, and staff have requested through their comments some additional justification to support our reduction. I understand there's no concerns on the balance of the val of, of the variances being proposed. Um, Mr. Chair, these comments did catch us by surprise. The applicant has been working with the city through a subsequent site plan application that was submitted back in August of 2020. The justification that was submitted with our variance package today for, for this variance application is the same justification that was reviewed by transportation staff through our site plan application. At no time during the site plan process did staff identify the need for this additional information. That being said, the comment is manageable there are industry standards that relate to parking rates for self-storage facilities 
And there are a number of examples in the GTA and in, and in the city of Toronto for parking reductions uh, for this particular use. Um, Mr. Chair, I, I am in your, I'm in this committee's hands. We would like to proceed with the application today. However, we don't want to risk a, a refusal on the application on the basis of the current comments by transportation staff. Um, I'm in your hands on how you would like us to proceed. Okay, uh, we don't have okay. any any um, any other speakers, just you. Could you explain how do you justify 104 spaces required and you have only 37? So, absolutely, Mr. Chair. The, um, the, the a self storage use does not generate a lot of traffic or parking demand. That's been studied uh, in and out through the industry. Uh, when we look at parking justification for these types of uses, we rely on, on surrogate sites or we rely on IT information, which is the, um, uh, I have the acronym here, Institute of Transportation Engineers. And th those, are, those are standards that, that traffic consultants use to rely on justifying a reduction. Um, based on the IT standards, they recommend a parking ratio of 0.1 spaces per 100 square meters uh, for self-storage use. Our proposal proposes 1.2 per 100 square meters, so we are exceeding what the ITE standards would require. Um, there are a number of examples, and I have a presentation uh, with some slides that I could could use to speak to those, uh, uh, could speak to the variances, but there are a number of examples in the city of Toronto where a parking reduction of this size uh, has been approved by this committee or the city uh, for self-storage uses. Did, did you want to see some uh, slides? Uh, certainly, I, I'm happy to take the committee through my presentation. Um, okay, we're, we're going to we're going to have the members ask the question. But did you ask for a, a slide to be shown? No. No, no. I was saying no. I have them okay. available. If, okay, yeah. thank you. So, uh, members, any uh, question for this gentleman? Mr. Mr. Klassen has his hand first. Yes, uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, the transportation report, it asks for proxy, for proxy surveys, and that seems to be the concern that, that, that those, those were not provided. Is there an explanation for that? Uh, well, the, is, is it, excuse me, through you, Mr. Chair, providing the proxy surveys and that information isn't, isn't a challenge. Our, our consultants and my, my client who is uh, in the industry of self-storage has that information and that, that data. It's just when we went through the original site plan submission, that information wasn't requested by staff. So we were working under the, the purview that staff were understood the parking demands for this type of use and didn't need that additional information. It's only come to light through this minor variance process that they, they, they would need that information moving forward. Um, it's just we went through 14 months of a site plan process to only uh, get played with that those comments just recently now. Any other question? If no questions, uh, I'll have to need a motion, please. Uh, Mr. <clears throat> Mr. Bartolo. Uh, yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. Through you. Um, uh, based on the comment, uh, based on the comments from the applicant here and the timeline that uh, they've already gone through with the city, um, I, I don't see any reason in in delaying this further to provide uh, what the agent is describing as essentially the same package of information. Um, so I would uh, like to uh, put forward uh, a motion to uh, approve this application, uh, subject to the conditions uh, noted in the uh, in the urban forestry memo. And that's all. Okay. Uh, subject to forestry condition. Second. Mr. Klassen, second. All in favor? Opposed? Two. Okay. Okay. So oh, Mr. Chair. Yeah. What? May I try a different motion? 
No, no, no. We're in the motion Mr. now. Chair. There is two against two. I have to make a decision. Give me oh, a I see. Okay. Give, give, Thank give you. Me a, give me a chance. <laughs> okay. We have um, we have the thing in front of us. I think combined with what the what the members said, and also the fact that there is a, a trend to discourage many cars in the city. I think I think I would go along with the uh, motion. And, uh, and approve the application subject to condition of forestry. So, sir, your application is approved subject to forest condition. Okay? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair and committee members. Have a great day. Yeah. Item number 20, which is six, Caswell Drive application number 20. And here we have Ali Shakiri. Ali Shakiri, are you there? Ali Shakiri, 326 Shepherd Avenue East. Good afternoon. Thank you. Good afternoon. Okay, we have here an uh, a application with the, um, a new dwelling. There's only five variances, one letter of support, nothing else. Do we need the presentation? No? Okay. Uh, sir, we don't need any presentation. Do you do you have anything to add before we move to committee? Nothing to add, sir. Thank you. Any question or motion, please? If no question, can I have a motion, please? Ms. Sankar? Go ahead, motion. I hear, we don't hear you. I'm sorry, I was trying to unmute and it just went somewhere else. Um, yes, through you, Mr. Chair, I do believe that uh, this is very minor in nature. It does meet the four tests. And so I'll put forward a motion to approve this application without condition. Thank you. Second, Mr. Klassen, all in favor? Okay, your application is unanimously approved. Thank you. Thank you. Twenty one, which is one Silver Grove application number twenty one, and this is Mr. Jonathan Benkowski. You again. Hello, hey, Mr. Chair. Okay, um, so we have an application here, and this is this is adding a shed, two variances. There's nothing else, no conditions, and no, no, nobody speaking. Any, any? Do we have? Do we need a presentation here? No. Okay, uh, sir. The uh, committee does not need the presentation. Do you have anything to add before we move to committee? I think just that the the as built of the side yard setback from the 1.78 to 1.8 was it was an error um, that was made in the process. Uh, that, that's essentially it. I'm sorry, are, they, uh, are you changing anything here? No, no, not at all. No. Not at all. Okay, so we have here two variances. Okay, any uh, any question to this gentleman, Ms. Uh, Atarodi? Yes, to you, Mr. Chair, I would like to get some explanation regarding variance number one, lot coverage of 35.9%. What is the existing lot coverage and expansion? The existing lot coverage will be 32%. And that's the additional um, two point. Sorry, uh, th yeah, two point nine is caused by the addition of the covered pergola at the rear. Okay, Ms. Sankar, another question. No, I'll no. put forward a motion. Okay, if there is no more question, please, please go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, to uh, approve this application, I do believe it's minor. It meets the four tests. I accept the explanations for variance number one. And so uh, my motion is to approve without condition. No condition, thank you. Second, Mr. C Mr. Bartolo, all in favor? Opposed? Ms. Sankar is opposing. Mr. Klassen, you had um, Mr. Ms. Ataroji. Sorry, Mr. Klassen, you had your hands there. Are you are you for or against? Uh, 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 I'm for, Mr. Chair. Thank you. So we have three, and uh, Ms. Atarodi is the only one who is opposing. And, uh, sir, your application is approved, and there is no condition. 
Thank you. Number 26. Oh, it's the, you again, eh? Mr. Uh, okay. Um, application number 20, 23. 23, that's the one we just... Second. Uh, Mr. Chair, if we're if we're going on to item number twenty three, yeah, yeah, Mr. Graham Kerr, Mr. Graham Kerr is not present. Oh, he's not in. Okay. Okay, so we have only the only the agent. Thank you. Thanks for that information. Okay, we have application number twenty three, which is forty two. Uh, Gwendolyn, application number 23. And uh, here we have Jonathan Benkowski. Mr. Benkowski, are you still there? I'm here, Mr. Chair. Okay, I know, I know who you are, you said it, but for each application, we have to announce it so it can be recorded on the, on the system. So please state your name and address again. Jonathan Benkowski, 301 Kiwatton Avenue. Thank you. So we don't have any other uh, any other speaker. We have the staff reports with conditions and uh, forestry, four minor, four variances, and one letter of objection. Um, members, any uh, do we need the presentation? No. Okay. Okay, Mr. Benkowski, we don't need uh, we don't need the presentation. Do you want to add something before we move on to the uh, decision? I think I think just to say that there is a previous approval that had numerous additional variances that the one that's before you today. We're actually reducing the coverage from the application that is before you today. And just as the, the staff board identifies that side main wall height is for projections that are actually in the front of the dwelling and aren't the side main wall. They're just visible from there. And we're happy with the condition of planning tying it to the substantial accordance uh, with the elevations. Yeah. Okay. So that's uh... It's per east and west elevation drawings. You're okay with that? Correct. Okay. Members, any, uh, can I have a motion, Ms. Sankar? Now it's Ms. Sankar. <laughs> okay. Yes. Uh, thank you for getting my name right, Mr. <laughs> Chair. I appreciate that. Um, so I put forward a motion to approve this application. I do believe that it does meet the four tests. There's, uh, there's one letter of opposition, but I think that the explanation is uh, self explanatory and uh, I'll make it subject to um, uh, the September 30th staff report and that the proposal be constructed substantially in accordance with the side east and side west elevation drawing submitted to committee. It'll be subject to forestry as well. And uh, that's my motion, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Second, Mr. Tarodi. Second, all in favor? Okay, unanimously approved, subject to forestry and the condition of the staff that you just heard, okay? Thank you. Thank you. Application number 24, which is two, Malabar Place, application number 24. And here we have, uh, we have here, uh, Quinn Zwang, son, and, uh, and the property owner, Chung Ping Yu. So anyone there, Mr. Ch Mr. Yang or Mr. Yu, are you there? We have Mr. Yang, the son of Mr. Yu. Any one of you is there? Mr. Moderator, anybody online? Uh, they are present and they are unmuted. Um, just to note, Mr. Chair, uh, we do have a late registration with respect to this item. A Norman Finley has registered to speak to this as well. Norman Finley, okay. Yeah, that is a, a late one, okay. All right, we'll, uh, we'll, uh, we'll address it. Let's see uh, if the, um, if the uh, son and owner are here. Um, Okay, Quinn's, Quinn's Young, are you there? And Chumping Yu, are you there? Hello? 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 
Yeah, Hello? We, yeah, yeah, we're hearing you. Could you please state your name and address? Do you hear us? Yeah, can you, can you please can you please go to the mic and speak clearly and state your name and address? Hello. Hello. Hi. Hello. Hello. Yeah, we yeah, could you please state your name clearly? Uh, sorry. Uh, uh, my name is Quincy. Uh, I'm not sure if you can hear me. Yeah, your name is Chuping. I heard that. Could you? Uh, uh, yeah, I'm also here. Is uh, I'm uh, Shen Shu Zhang, the applicant, but uh, you is not a turn of my uh, microphone. Well, do you, do you want do you want to fix it? We we, we have no problem here. Uh, the problem yeah, stems from you there. Yeah, I mean, uh, if you can give uh, uh, unmute to Mr. Shen Shu Zhang, uh, uh, he will present uh, on our case. Oh hi. Can you hear me? We hear, yeah, we hear some noises there, but could you please clearly state your name and address? Yes, my name is Shen Chu Zhang, applicant as the agent of the uh, application. You're the agent, okay. Uh, ad address 98 Scarsdale, Toronto. Good, okay. So we have here the application 24, we have another speaker that want to speak on this item. We got here, um, there is a report refusing some variances and uh, the, the uh, transportation report refu recommends refusal. And we have forestry and we have two objections and three, five objections. So could you please address those concerns and give us your presentation for five minutes and I'll give you your five minutes now. Yeah, sure. So we have reviewed the comments from uh, the urban forestry and discussed the, about the tree protections with uh, David Bostock. So for uh, for that reason, we, we submitted a, a change the uh, site plan. Uh, we configured the driveway, reduced it. Uh, I'm not sure if you have received, uh, received it. I, I could see it on the website. And then uh, David uh, said that he is more likely to support this uh, um, this configuration. And uh, we also reviewed the, uh, the comments from transportation department, the staff report, and also letters of the uh, from the neighbors. And actually, the the letter from the association also uh, agreed that all the. Uh, variances are minor, but uh, put together they uh, feel not very comfortable. And another neighbor mentioned about the uh, uh, daylight. So put together, we have done some uh, changes. Uh, I can go through the variances to, uh, requested. So the variance number one, um, the Permitted uh, lot coverage is a 30%. We uh, proposed the 32.7% uh, remain, uh, remain that. And the second variance about the front yard setback, uh, we eliminated the, this variance. So we will provide uh, the required front yard setback of 7.65. And about the um, minor variance number three, um, we like to remain the three uh, three car garage. Actually, when we look at the neighbor's building, the house on uh, of uh, uh, number three, seven, eight, and ten. The, all the four houses on the same street, Malaba uh, place, have three uh, car garage. So, hello. Also, Excuse me. I I hate to uh, to interrupt you. Uh, I, I, we didn't understand. Uh, think what you want to do. Are you making any changes? 
And if you make changes, I'd like you to mention the, the, uh, the variance number and what you're changing it to. Clearly, please, because I didn't get anything of what you said there. So uh, you have here, okay. we have eight variances. Which one you're changing to what? Number two is unlimited, is it deleted? Number two, you, you're doing what to number two? Deleted. Could so They're deleting number two. They're deleting number two. Elimin you're going to eliminate number two, okay? Yes. Next. And then the others we, 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 have, we don't change. Which one? No change. No change. Okay, so yeah. just number two you're eliminating. Okay, thank you. That's what, that was easy. Okay. So yeah, do you want uh, one thing I'd like to say is the three car garage is very common in the neighborhood. Okay. Okay, three car. And then the number, yeah, the number uh, three, seven, eight, ten on uh Balava place have a uh, three car garage. Number ten and the nine uh close to the building has have also three car garage. So three car garage is very normal. And uh, in my uh, our new configuration, we reduced the, the uh, curb cut to three meters to the uh, to reduce the pavement and to reduce the to increase the landscaping. So I think the revised uh, site plan is a uh, is a uh, uh, suitable to the neighborhood. Okay. Okay, so that's all the changes we made, and uh, uh, you can ask me questions. I'm ready to answer. Okay, I think you, uh, I think you got your, uh, you got your five minutes. We'll see if there is any questions. I note what you're saying here. Eliminate number two, and you, you say that the, the garage is common. The three story, the uh, three car garage is common in the area. That's a. Uh, that I guess you had to discuss with the uh, transportation. I don't know. Yes. Yet. Yeah. Okay. And uh, and we'll get you back for questioning. In the meantime, uh, we have one more one more speaker apparently that. just uh, registered. Norman Finley, are you there? Oh, hi. It's uh, Norman Finley speaking. Um, yeah. Your address. Hi, Could um, you please tell us your address? Yes, it's at Ten Larkfield Drive, uh, North York, Ontario. Thank you. And tell us what's your concern about this application. Um, I did submit uh, with my neighbor uh, written notices of objection. We think that uh, you know the stated reason for the variance is that it's a corner lot is uh, um, not a, a, a proper reason for. A, additional height or additional lot coverage because the size of the lot doesn't change because it's a corner lot. Uh, we're particularly concerned about the height because we're directly um, facing the house and it will block out our uh, sunlight. And we're also uh, concerned with the um, uh, part of which he's uh, addressed, but with the number of trees that would have to be destroyed as a result of uh, this project. Um, Along with that, the uh, drainage would be created by almost paving the entire front lawn. And I think other than that, uh, our written submissions uh, speak to our objections. Yes, we have. We, we have a number of objections. Now, uh, are, you, are you finished here? And we'll see if there's any question. Yes, that's uh, fine. Okay, yeah. any question Happy for this uh, speaker? Okay, we'll get back, Mr. Uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Uh, Findlay. Yeah. No, Chen Chu, yeah. Mr. Chen Chu, are you there? Yes. Okay. Uh, you heard the uh, objection there. Do you have any other comments before we we go to the committee? Yeah, uh, we, we'd like to add another comment about the location of the driveway. So, uh, Luxfield uh, Drive is more busier and then uh, Baraba place is a shorter uh, street, and then currently the driveway is facing uh, Lockfield, 
and uh, but because we do not have enough setbacks from the street, and there is also a side walk. So I think for the community, the driveway locating on the uh, Malaba place is better than uh, on uh, Lark Field. That's uh, one thing I like to add. Thank you. That's it. Okay, thank you. Uh, members, any question first to this gentleman? And if there is no question, no question, then I need a motion. Anyone for a motion? Mr. Bartolo? Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. I've heard uh, all of the speakers uh, make their position clear here. And uh, I understand most of the concerns revolve around this driveway, which is permitted at six meters. Uh, however, the uh, the driveway is six meters where it's adjacent to the roadway and then it fans out for the, the three car garage as the applicant has mentioned. And the, the transportation report doesn't mention anything about the side yard. Um, uh, and it being a corner lot, uh, regardless of those items, um, I'm going to put forward uh, a motion to approve this application with the uh, subject to the removal of uh, variance number two, the proposed front yard setback, and uh, subject to the uh, requirements of the urban forestry memo attached. Okay. Uh, second. Mr. Klassen, second. All in favor? Opposed? Ms. Atarodi is Ms. opposing. Huh? Ms. Atarodi is opposing. And uh, Ms. Atarodi, are you opposing? Yes? Yeah, I got that. I got that. Thank you. I opposed. Huh? I opposed, yes. I got that, yeah. Thank you. Okay. Um, sir, your application is, is approved. Subject to the to number you, you removed and uh, condition of... Uh, of forestry, and that's it. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Mr. Cha Mr. Chair, if I may, there is a request put forward from item number 31 to be heard as they have an appointment to make. Uh-huh, okay, 31. Alex Axelrod, are you there? Uh, my name is uh, Joe Dome. I'm uh, agent uh, for the owner. Okay, you're here for application number 31, which is 203 Franklin? That's true, yeah. Okay, so you're requesting, you're requesting because uh, you, have, you have an appointment. Uh, we, you know, we have to have a reason. Anybody can say an appointment. What, what's so special about this appointment? Of course. Um, I apologize. I had a, a hearing in Mississauga for September 30th that they pushed to today at uh, 3 p.m. And I, I contacted the community adjustment um, a while ago uh, asking if, if it's possible to maybe uh, be heard earlier or to, uh, to try to uh, not have them uh, overlap. Um, I'd just like to know if anything can be done there. Okay. All right. So we have here is a, for a new accessory building yard and we read a story, one story addition, five variances, staff report is modifying one, wants to modify one, three, four, five per applicant, you, you said it, and there is a condition. So could you please give us your presentation and tell us exactly what variance you're changing and to what? Yes, thank you so much. Um, hi, my name is Joe Dome, 1101 Steeles Avenue West, agent for the owner. I'd like to begin by stating that discussions were had with planning and based on their recommendations, changes were made to the application. The changes as submitted on the plans dated September 20th, uh, 2021 are as follows. Number one, uh, the rear deck was reduced on the east side to meet the bylaw for side yard setback, uh, thereby eliminating variance number one. The external garage uh, size has been reduced to meet the bylaw and eliminate variance number five, the ancillary lot coverage, 
Uh, this also reduces the law coverage variance number three from 41.66% to 39.86%. Um, and finally, variance number four regarding the roof eaves, um, that has also been eliminated as well. Um, so after these changes, we only have variances number uh, two and three remaining. And to address these, um, the side yard setback variance number two is simply a continuation of the existing side yard setback of the dwelling. And uh, the impact of the law coverage variance number three is mitigated by the fact that the dwelling, including the rear one-story addition, sure, can accounts you, for a law coverage. Can, can you please help us not to give the explanation yet? Could you just tell us what variance you're changing and to what, and then you can make the, the explanation. Are you changing any variance? Sure. Yeah, so we're um, eliminating variance number one. Number one eliminating, okay. Yeah, um, we're eliminating uh, variance number four. Number four, yeah. Yeah, and we're also eliminating uh, variance number five. Oh, okay. Yeah, so we've got two variances remaining, uh, Very, two and three. Okay, great, okay. And those, those two remain as is, right? Um, so uh, number three is being reduced as well. Uh, that's reduced to, uh, sorry, that's reduced from 41.66, which is listed there. Uh, now it's 39.86. 39 point what? 39.86. 86, thank you. Okay, so we got it. So yeah. please go ahead. Okay. Um, yeah, so the impact of the law coverage variance uh, number three is mitigated by the fact that the dwelling, including the rear one-story addition, accounts for a lot coverage of 29.86%, while the proposed garage now meets the bylaw for ancillary structure lot coverage. Furthermore, the rear addition is only one story with no side windows, which limits both its massing impact and privacy with the neighboring property. And there were a few neighbors who, were initially, who initially had concerns, but the owner has since spoken with the neighbors at number 205 and 201, and at the back at uh, 102 and 100 Stewart, and they all gave their okay once the revisions were explained. Um, planning has no objections to the revised plans and variances and recommend that the property uh, be developed substantially in accordance with the site plan drawing that was uh, submitted to the Committee of Adjustment, date stamped on September 20th, 2021. Uh, we feel this application is uh, reasonable and minor in nature, and I'd be happy to answer any more questions you have. Thank you. Yeah, we don't have any. Uh, we don't have any other speaker here. Uh, just you, and uh, members. Any question to this gentleman? He's removing one, four, and five, and modifying number three to twelve thirty-nine point eighty-six. Any questions, Miss Miss Do you have a question? No. No question. No. Motion. I'm oh. ready for the motion if there is no okay. other question. Okay, if there is no more question, can I have a motion then, Mr. Tharodi? Go ahead. Okay, through you, Mr. Chair, I would like to put forward a motion to approve this application with the following changes. Variance number one, four, five have been eliminated. Variance number three, the, the, the proposed lot coverage is now 39.86%. And also would like to add the staff recommendation that the proposal be constructed substantially in accordance with site plan and the east elevation drawing submitted to the city. And also would like to uh, add a forestry condition to it too. Thank you. Second, Mr. Uh, Mr. Klassen, all in favor? Okay. Sir, your application unanimously approved based on those changes you made and condition to from the staff and condition of forestry. Thank you so much. Have a nice meeting. Okay, so so we're back into twenty yeah. five, yeah. Twenty five, yeah. All right, application number 25, which is 142 Glendora Avenue, application number 25. And here we have Ali Tanha, are you there? Yes, Mr. Chair. The agent, okay. Can you please, can you please state your name and address for us? Ali Tanha, Ali Design Inc., uh, 59 Rocky Crescent, East York. Thank you. 
Okay, we have here, this is a new dwelling, three variances, forestry condition, nothing else. Do we need the presentation? No? Okay. Mr. Tana, we, do, we don't need the presentation. Uh, do you want to add something before we move into the committee? Uh, no, Mr. Chair, I don't find it. Okay, it's thank you. So, is there a question? If not, can I have a motion, please? Anyone for motion? Oh, Mr. Klassen was first. Mr. Klassen, go ahead. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. This is this is minor. It does meet all the four tests. I'd like to move to approve this application and to make it, it, it and to make it subject to urban forestry as well. Thank you. Second, Ms. Sankar, all in favor? Okay, sir, your application is unanimously approved, subject to condition of forestry. Thank you. Have a good afternoon. What happened to 24? Eh? Oh no, 24 was gone, 25 was gone. Now it's 26, huh? Yeah, this one where we were supposed to. Uh, Okay, application number 26, which is 10 Stainer Avenue. Application number 26, and the Mr. Jonathan Benkowski. This is the one we did not, uh, was the, the, uh, the application was uh, refused for deferral, and now we want to hear it. Could you please give us a presentation? Yes, can we bring up my support material, please? Jonathan Benkowski, 301 Kiwatton Avenue. So, I'm sorry, what's your question? Could we bring up my support material I filed, please? Yeah, okay, she's looking to, which one do you want? Uh, just the, the material I filed, which were some pictures. So what we have here is, is a situation to maintain um, some parameters of the built form that have already been constructed. It's important to note that the house is permitted and is built and is permitted. The Portions that are not permitted, as we look at the front, one are the two front balconies that are there. The permitted size of the balcony uh, is over the zoning bylaw. There is no overlook concern from the front. These are front balconies that don't have overlook into rear yards. The next variance that I want to address in this photo deals with the basement entrance being not visible from the street. The variance does request relief to a front entrance, as we see here. The front entrance of the basement is not visible from the streetscape. If we go to the next picture, please. I've now taken it from an angle. Again, you can see that that front entrance is hidden, not only by the main entrance stair to the dwelling, but in addition behind large shrubs that exist that are there today. If we can go to the next picture, please. The request for the building depth relates to the portion of the basement that is built under the existing porch. So the porch and the deck at the rear is permitted. Could we go to the next one, please? This deck there is permitted as it is. What has happened is the owner has built a portion of the basement below that. Once it is structurally connected to the rest of the dwelling, it now counts as being building depth. What we see here is the impact of that is mitigated by there being no occupiable space actually above that. The rear wall, wall of the dwelling is built as per the approved building permit. We go to the next, the next uh, uh, slide, please. This is the shed in question that it was my understanding it was existing before and was meant to be maintained, which was part of the reason I requested the deferral was to look into this as well as making additional changes. Um, at this time, it would be my understanding that is that does exist. That is a standard shed in the rear. What we have next to it is a covered pergola that again goes into the coverage that we would have no issue removing, uh, which was part of what I would like to have discussed with the neighbors. Uh, at this time, really my, my presentation centers around the impact of what is there. In terms of the soft landscaping at the back, yes, it is with pavers, but it is done with permeable pavers throughout. So in terms of drainage and any issue that that might create, it is mitigated by permeable pavers that are at the back there today. 
Uh, in terms of the two units in the basement, the idea for the second unit in the basement is actually a second kitchen that is to operate as a kosher kitchen. But because there are two kitchens in the basement, it automatically triggers the variance for a second kitchen in the basement. But the intent is for that to be a separate kosher kitchen um, that would be installed there. And I'm happy to answer any questions that you might have. Okay, thank you. We'll, um, I guess we'll bring you back after we hear the other speakers. Um, here we have uh, Kim Kwash, are you there? Still, okay. still not present, Mr. Chair. No? No. Thank you. And uh, Matthew Smith, are you there? Matthew Smith. He, he is present and is unmuted, Mr. Chair. Yeah. He was present before, yeah? M Matthew Smith. In the meantime, there is a Claudio. Hello. Hello, Hello. Mr. Mr. Smith. Yes. Okay, yes. so could you again tell us your name and address because we're dealing with the application now. Okay, thank you. Uh, it's Matthew Smith and I am the owner of uh, 15 Romar. Thank you. So tell us what's your concern about this uh, application. You heard the agent okay. and we'd like to hear from you. I have uh, prepared some remarks, but I also have uh, some photos that I'd like to reference. They've been supplied uh, with my wife's written application. So they could be, I don't know if you've seen them or they could be presented. Can you, can you expose them? Yeah, uh, we don't want to waste your time. Could you please keep going on your presentation? And if we find them. Well, I, I know that. I, I'm not hope I'm you have my time. I've been here for a couple hours and I respect your time. Um, the agent was able to present photos without an issue. I'm, I don't know why I'm not able. Yeah, to. I'm trying to help you. I said, keep going and she's looking for the photos. Okay, that's fine. I just want to make sure Matthew they're available Smith. when I Matthew Smith when I cite and Celia Smith or Celia Coro is the one that did the written application. Attach. Yes. Okay, so my wife and I have been the owners for um, 29 years. Our house uh, backs on to Ken Stainer. Am I unmuted? Yeah, we hear you, we hear you. Please go in. Please okay, go thank in. you, thank you. Um, now there's a, I hope that you've had a chance. There's been a lot of, uh, uh, there's been a number of written submissions from the neighborhood about our concerns and the impacts of these allegedly minor variances you're considering today. I think it's fair to say that there is near, if not total, opposition to these variances. And a lot of that is based upon the reality that we're not dealing with good faith requests for minor variances to improve a property. This is not a case of a neighbor against a neighbor. This is a case of a neighborhood against a numbered corporation. The owner is 11520 Three zero Ontario Inc. Who is determined to intensify for commercial gain the use of Ken Stainer. The second kitchen, Mr. Vescia is not building a kosher kitchen. My Italian is not very good, but Mr. Vescia, who is the owner of 1152030, is being insincere. The owner has already gone beyond whatever approval he may have received to build, and this is consistent with his history of violating planning and approval processes. I believe it's incumbent upon and within the authority of this committee to send a strong message that this will not be tolerated and reject all the variances. As you know, we've been going through COVID the last two years. And what we've seen is that we've seen communities coming together to help each other and protect each other. But we've also seen conflict as some contingent citizens advocate for personal individual freedom. And that's what I see as a decision for you today. So I ask you, what's more important? Shared community values, protecting good planning decisions, or the individual right to do whatever you please, regardless of the impact. There is virtually nothing this application is minor. 
And where it may seem so, it's also misstated. There is number six specifically is requesting a setback of two points of 0 0.272 meters. This is my first photo that I'd like to show you. The fence line. This shows that the pergola, which is not a pergola, it's an illegally constructed 13 foot wall is less than six centimeters off the center post. When the, when the applicant is saying that he's going to remove the pergola, is he saying and committing here for the committee that he's going to be tearing down, I hate to say it, I sound, tear down that wall. Sounds very uh, Reagan-ish. This structure is being represented as a pergola. It is not now, it will not be if the committee approves the variance. There's a picture showing it's being built with rebar. It's blocking, that whole wall blocks the sunshine. Our neighbor had to remove his vegetable garden. The owner, 1152030 Ontario Inc. Has, was building this illegally and it was only stopped. And you can see that it's not a, it's not a, it's not a pergola. It's got rebar. The request to have the, the um, coverage greater than 50%. Clearly, he's already admitted that it's all covered. You can see it in his own pictures. It's 4.26%. We're in the middle of a climate change. The, re the reality is that the city is facing many issues with stormwater. The neighboring properties cannot withstand this. 4.26% is obscene. There is no way that that works. And it extends the logic regarding the maximum lot coverage. I'll tell you, that porch is going to be covered up as soon as he gets permission that that's grandfathered in. I would also like to note that in the original application, there are several errors. This is building is being represented as a building from the 1940s. It's clearly not. You can see it in his own picture. It's basically 100% new construction. The owner 1152030 has also indicated that it's not been subject to any other previous planning applications, when in fact, there was an application that was denied by the committee. And it went all the way to the OMB in 2008, 2009. Those are two errors right there. The whole thing is crazy. I thank you for your time. I'll conclude by saying that I hope I've contributed to your appreciation of the fact that these are inappropriate scale for the variances and that you will determine that none of the variances should be approved. Thank you. Mr. Chair, you're muted. Okay, we had another speaker that registered late. Uh, Claudio, Serra, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Okay, can you please state your name and address for us? Claudio Serra, 12 Banner Avenue. Okay, and tell us what you're concerned about this application. You heard the speaker, you heard the agent, the other speaker, and tell us what you have to. Yes, um, I would like to start off by uh, saying I hope that the committee was able to read the letter that we submitted. I'm sure by now you've heard several times that this already came before the OMB in 2008, uh, sorry, before the Committee of Adjustment in 2008 and was refused and that was appealed and taken to the OMB and was also refused. Uh, many of these variances are the same as the ones that were refused back in 2008, such as lock coverage, and um, uh, the building length, uh, but quite frankly, these are just numbers. They, they don't mean much without the context of the fact that this property owner simply builds whatever they want and then hopes that the city will not enforce what he's done. Just as Mr. Smith stated, his objective is simply to turn this into a commercial property. It's been from the very beginning, um, these variances, like if you take the 35% lot coverage, that's supposed to be a maximum 
It was refused last time at 40%. Now it's at 53.64%. The reason for this is because somehow he was given a permit to build a rear deck. And of course, what he didn't do was build a normal rear, rear deck. He excavated and built a new basement that extended his basement and built a deck on top, all illegally. But with the city's lack of enforcement, it just kept going on and on and on. This has been going on at this particular property for 15 years and with this particular family for 34 years on this street. So the residents are sick and tired of it. And we need to know that the city is going to take this seriously once and for all. We want enforcement. We want the entire rear uh, uh, deck with basement to be removed. The city needs to use the powers that it has and enforce them. Because to say that it's okay, it's already built, it's not doing any harm is ridiculous. It, what this property already does just flies in the face of the laws of the city. Uh, I would reiterate what Mr. Smith said about the uh, kosher kitchen. Mr. Besho is Italian, and the last time I checked, he was not Jewish. So the kitchen was put in specifically for a basement rental, a second basement rental, okay? The, the pictures that Mr. Benkowski took are very, 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 very deceptive because they, they are only showing you what he wants you to see, okay? I see barely see any of the pergola in that picture. If you look at that pergola, it's ridiculous. As Mr. Smith said, it is built a building. It is not a pergola. It is a building, okay? We warned the OMB back in 2009 about the foundations that he was creating for that basement extension that is now built. He's bringing plumbing, he's bringing drains, electrical to create additional dwellings. If it were up to Mr. Vesho, this would be a 10 story apartment building. So this is not a case of minor variances coming before you. This is a long history of flouting the law. Uh, I'm not sure what else I can say about the, the, the four tests, I mean, uh, in particular, I mean, these variances are not minor. 4.26% versus 50% coverage is mind boggling. Uh, when Mr. Vesho excavated that basement, all he did was throw, instead of removing the dirt, he threw the dirt into his backyard and raised the level of that backyard by about a meter. So his backyard, what you can't see in these pictures, is his backyard is much higher than his neighbors. When you add the fact that there is no soft landscaping back there, all there is is risk of flood to the neighbors. But of course, he doesn't care about that. Uh, as stated at the OMB in 2009, these uses, the, the, the variances are not desirable. They're not appropriate development. It's an overdevelopment of the lot. Um, and uh, I thank you for your time. Okay, thank I uh, hope that the committee thank uh, you. refuses this application in its entirety. Thank you. Uh, any question for this uh, speaker? No? Okay, I think those are the only speakers we had. We'll get back the agent, Mr. Uh, Benkowski. Mr. Benkowski, are you, are you there? I'm here, Mr. Chair. Okay, so could you address all those concerns, please? Uh, yes. Uh, a couple of things. The the increase in coverage is uh, caused by that covered rear porch at the rear. I, I think it's important we look at back at what the impact of that covered rear porch is um, at the rear. That's in a rear yard that does not extend above grade, okay? Nor does that impact either adjacent neighbors to the east, west, or to the north. In terms of Mr. Vestio uh, not requiring a kosher kitchen, I'm not not quite sure why that's uh, applicable here. Um, the, the intent is for a kosher kitchen to be located in the basement. In terms of the, the fence that's spoken of at the rear, anybody is permitted to put a fence uh, along the rear property line of their building. That can be solid slats. Um, I mean, the idea of rebars going in there, yes, is, is probably extreme, but, but the, again, to come back to the impact, a fence is 100% to be uh, permitted to be built along that rear property line uh, within somebody's property itself. 
Um, and, and I think that's really all I have to say. There wasn't too much brought up about the actual impact. It was more the history of the property. I wasn't involved in any previous OMB decision. Um, also important to note that the dwelling itself has an issued building permit. The violations from the existing building permit that are built form variances are for the front porch, uh, sorry, for the second floor deck, as well as the increase in depth. And, and I would say the impact of those two from the original building permit is mitigated one by that porch being located at the front of the set of the dwelling at the second floor, as well as that increase in depth, not extending uh, anywhere more than 42 inches, which again is actually below a regular fence uh, that somebody could have at the side lot lines. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Any question? And if no question, Ms. Sankar, are you, is that a question? No, it's a motion. Uh, no, I was uh, ready to make a motion if there was no question. Okay, any other one question? No questions, please go ahead, Ms. Sankar. Okay, uh, you know, I was of the uh, impression at the beginning to, um, you know, for a fair judicial process sort of to defer this application. Um, my colleagues had, moved to hear this out and I'm kind of glad that they did because um, hearing what the debutantes had to say, looking at this application and looking at the evidence that was uh, is submitted today, even if this were seen in the future, I had not realized sort of the history of everything to do with this file. And I think the debutantes were extremely convincing to me that this absolutely does not fit the character of this neighborhood. Um, I'm, I'm actually very concerned about this application. And for that reason, I don't believe it meets the four tests and I motion to refuse this application altogether. Okay, motion to refuse, second. Mr. Bartolo, second, all in favor? Okay, unanimous. Sir, your application is unanimously refused. Thank you. Thank you. Number 27, uh, 27, which is 158 Randolph Road, application number 27. And here we have, we have Robin McKenna, are you there? Yeah, I'm here, uh, can okay. you hear me? Could you please state your name and address for us? Sure. My name is Rob McKenna. Um, I live at 329 St. Clarence Avenue. I'm the agent for the, uh, the homeowner, um, Yama Assad. Okay, thank you. So you saw what's happening here. You have uh, you have a, a, a new dwelling, two-story laneway and carport. We have seven variances. The, um, the staff report has the number, repeats the numbers of variances that you modified and the, plus they're asking to refuse to reduce number two the transportation okay has no objection and there's letters of objection and there's the councillor letter recommends the refusal could you please address all those concerns in your presentation and they'll give you your five minutes and see what's because we have we have one two three four we have four more speakers on the item so we'd like you to make a presentation and then we'll hear you after. Perfect. Um, am I able to share my screen or? I'm sorry, you're able to what? Uh, am I able to share my screen? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The screen, yeah, okay. Sorry. Mr. Chairman, you're not allowed Mr. Chairman, they can't share the screen. We can only show what they submitted for presentation. Okay, okay, my mistake. Um, I guess I can, I can go fairly quickly through it because um, essentially uh, we've sort of conceded on everything and actually gone a little bit lower than what the um, the staff report requested. So I can go very um, quickly through this. Um, in, in terms of the presentation, I mean, you can just sort of flip through it um, very quickly. So it's 150 Randolph Road. Um, it's an RM zone. Uh, laneway suites are permitted in this area. Secondary suites are permitted, but we are uh, not requesting a secondary suite, even though it's required. Uh, it's permitted for the site. Um, you, you can kind of just flip through it. But the, it essentially, one of the 
Uh, the biggest issues was the fact that we had the third story. Uh, so we tried to make an argument, but uh, Yama went around and he talked to a few of the neighbors and, um, you know, one of them kind of like got him thinking and I decided to actually reduce the variances by completely removing the, the second story. So if I just look at the quick uh, list of variances for uh, the house, um, number one, um, minimum 85% area of rear main wall, a residential building of the main floor walls, green cellar building containing a land use. Okay, so it's basically pr proposed law, um, landscaping. We're 5% lower than that, so it's actually quite minor in nature. Um, you can see from the plans that pretty much everything is landscaping, so to be able to have that, uh, that walkout and to have good windows for the basement, um, he's pretty much given it absolutely as much as he can. Um, so there's not really a lot of wiggle room there, so 80% is quite small. Uh, number two, the 0.6% FSI. Um, we were asking for 0.86, and with the removal of the second story, uh, we are asking, uh, so a modification to this variance would be a, a, an ask of 0 0.68. So we're, we're asking for a lower variance on that, um, which is actually very much in line with the um, uh, the existing FSIs that have improved in the area. And I, if needed, I have a couple examples that are in the 70, the 0 0.7 range. Um, number three, the maximum height of all exterior main walls. Uh, it, they asked us just to remove the height of the building to make it 8.8, .8, which is a pretty common number of a lot of the variances in the area, but we've actually decided to get rid of the sidewall variance, um, number three, um, as well as the height, number six, but I'll, I'll, um, the height variance we're getting rid of as well. So number three, you can, you can delete. Uh, number four, uh, parking space, uh, it seems to actually be very common in the initial planning or the original planning of this, these neighborhoods that uh, different variances, either having no parking spaces or to have uh, reduced size parking spaces is very common. Um, I'd almost venture as much as 40% of the applications in the one kilometer radius had some form of parking uh, variance for size. So I think that should be considered fairly minor. Um, when we get to number five, yeah, again, that's that's parking space. Um, again, uh, number six, as I mentioned, um, the committee had said, could you please make it two stories and 8.8 .8 meters? We've decided to make it two stories and 8.5 meters meeting the other uh, bylaw, so you can delete that variance. Number seven, the minimum required side yard setback is 0 0.9, um, and we are proposing 0 0.81. That is also one of those situations where to get the interior layouts to work, um, we need a little bit of extra space, but the current building had a, a side yard setback of six, uh, 0.46. So this is actually in an increase to the existing condition by about 341 millimeters. So technically we've, we've actually made it a little better than it was previously. So that would be for the, the variances for um, the house itself, but essentially to say that those three points that the, um, that everyone has sort of had like the biggest issues with have been removed and actually are a little bit lower than what um, the committee staff was uh, willing to permit. And then for the laneway notice, it's, it's, um, it's a very, very minor um, variance where it was a minimum 85% of the area, of the rear main wall, uh, and the proposed area of soft landscaping is 83.18, uh, where 85% is permitted. So it, it's actually quite minor. And again, that just goes to um, having that walkout um, meant that, you know, we were, we were close, very close, but not quite able to get to the landscape requirements. So I'll just, I'll just finish and say that essentially we, we've more than conceded. We've actually dropped some of the variances that the COA uh, staff was willing to uh, give us 8.8 .8, and uh, we've basically conceded on everything. Can you please, can you please just go over the, uh, like in, in variance number seven, you said change to 0.81. Is, is the, the variance said 0.801. Are you okay with that? I uh, for for variance number seven, the rear, uh, the side yard setback. Yeah, you said eight. eight uh, I heard point eight one. The variance oh, said my, eight, my mistake. My mistake. I think I just misspoke. We're 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 just. I was just making an argument for that being eight quite point zero one. Okay, so could you please yeah. go back for us on the uh, items because I I like you to please say the the, the variance number and what you're changing it to and what you're eliminating. Okay, so variance one to remain as is. Okay. That's it's 5%, uh, variance two. 
uh, is going from 0 0.86 yes. to 0 0.68. 6 eight, okay. So that's a reduction. Uh, number three, we are eliminating the um, the main wall height. Variance. Remove, okay. Number four uh, is a standard variant, so we are keeping number four for parking space as well as five. And for number six, um, we are actually eliminating that as well. So we're going from 9.25 meters and three stories to 8.5 meters and two stories. So number okay. six is eliminated. Very and number seven is to remove. Number seven, we covered it. Okay, so three and six yeah. are removed, and the other one changes. Okay, so let's. Uh, uh, if there has a questions, we'll bring you back. Uh, we'll see the. Um, we have here a number one, two, three, four. Four people here are registered to speak, and we'll get you back. Okay. So we have okay. here, Catherine Petrov. Are you there? Yes, I'm here. Thank okay. you. Good afternoon. Can can you please state your name and address for us? My name is Catherine Petrov. I'm at 281 Sutherland Drive. Thank you. So you want to, you want to tell us what's your concern about this this application? Uh, yes. So I will go through the points as requested. Um, first one with regard to the 85% uh, requirement for soft landscaping in between the rest of the uh, residential building and the laneway suite, while it is a 6% reduction, I would like to point out this is a very new uh, type of application for the City of Toronto. A tremendous amount of work must have gone in to create bylaws around laneway suites. I would expect that the 85% was well debated and has reason to be there and it's not uh, it's very recent. So I think even though it's 6%, given that this is probably one of the first in many laneway suites, if we start with 6% with this one, and another six, and another six, and another six, all of which are small on paper, we will soon not have any softscape whatsoever. So I would ask that it's considered with the intent of the committee that created those, uh, the bylaws for softscape in mind. Uh, obviously, without the softscape, we have a tremendous amount of density. We still, if we go to uh, the index, so number 2.2 .2 on the floor space index, we are still higher than permitted. I don't know how this is calculated in the context of also allowing a two-story laneway suite that covers a great amount of the backyard. So I will just ask that they are taken in consideration together. Uh, number four, with the parking space in the front, I know that it's a common thing in the neighborhood. It doesn't appear that there's actual space for it, but it wasn't part of the initial building permit. Uh, if you are not aware, this structure is more or less framed out already. The initial building permit, the initial plan had a two story building with a laneway suite on top of a single story garage with one carport in the context of the new laneway suite being two stories no garage a carport and then adding that parking in the front we are significantly changing what was initially in the building plan so i do have objection to the process by which piecemeal approvals in isolation it appears to it's very difficult to find information about the laneway suite in the first approval. Uh, number five, I think four and five, I'll address together. Uh, the side yard setback. I think the uh, the photo rendition that was showing the side yard setback of this new proposal, the house that's shown beside it is uh, I don't know where that house is from. It's it's a lovely one, but it's not the one that's currently beside. It's a it's a rendering. I understand that. These lots are very tight and very close. There was a tree permitted to be removed in that backyard as part of the initial two story application without front parking with a carport and garage with single with the laneway suite on top. That tree has already been removed and now with these new changes, we're taking away more green space than the initial building permit and 
where it was approved that that tree could be removed. The tree won't come back. Um, I think, you know, if I look at some of the other concerns I have, it really is about the process. Perhaps the process for laneway sweeps is not well understood, but it is very hard to reconcile the documents that are associated with this. First one, like I say, single, single car garage with a laneway suite above and a carport is suddenly a two story laneway suite with a carport underneath and this massive structure looms over the laneway. It, it kind of looks like two Brinks trucks parked over top of the laneway. I think it's a significant difference from what was on the initial building. And I think that should be taken into consideration in all of these conversations about softscape, extra parking, which takes away the environmental assets of lawns and trees and just the congestion of this particular lot. There is very little air left on that lot. The laneway will be warmer, the breezes will be gone. And frankly, I don't object to laneway suites, but I don't understand how we went through these different Ms. iterations. Ms. Petrov, I'd ask you please to summarize. You're, you're close to uh, five, five minutes. We have other people to speak. Thank you, Noel. Thank you. Uh, I will summarize just to say, I think that the the process by which a plan was approved, building started, and then this secondary plan comes up with three stories and this major density for potentially three or four families in a single family neighborhood. The process has not, it doesn't feel like it's been genuine. It feels like they're just trying to get as much as they can. Okay, any, any question for this Thank speaker? You. No question. Okay, the next one is, uh, Lori Gurney, are you there? Lori Gurney? Mr. They're Mod not present, Mr. Chair. Mr. Moderator, is she there? No, they're, no, they are not present. They're not present, okay. Next one is Jeff Cattell. Mr. Cattell, are you there? Yes. Okay, so please. Hello? Yeah, yeah, we hear you. So please go ahead. We'll give you five minutes. Tell us what's, uh, what's, your, what's the concern about this application. Um, well, um, Mr. Chair, um, as you know, the, um, there were three items on the agenda for the side today. Um, and this is the only one that we are objecting to. Um, we are quite discriminating in the ones that we oppose. This is a, an application that has considerable raised considerable concerns um, in the neighborhood. It's the first, um, to our knowledge, it's the first laneway suite in the neighborhood. Um, and um, it's uh, caused a, 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 a quite a, a, an uproar in the neighborhood. The, um, we agree totally with what uh, Ms. Petrov has said um, in her description. I would add that the, the site has been closed down. Uh, the, um, the, uh, the applicant evidently started to, to build something that was basically um, illegal um, and had to be closed down. And, and this is, it really puts a, a smell on the whole application. I would, um, in terms of what hasn't been raised so far, I would think that there are still a few things. There's no detailed laneway suite floor plan uh, and elevations. So how did the zoning examiner do their review? Uh, from the point of view of the, um, the laneway suite, it's got a great overlook. In fact, it overlooks both side neighbors and also the rear facing neighbor across the lane. The, um, we, we, it looks like there is, is, is um, um, a lot coverage issue. Um, you've got a 0.68 um, uh, density on the, on the site uh, for the, um, for the for the one building, but what about the laneway suite? It would appear that the um, it's not clear, frankly, that the zoning examination is complete. Uh, it looks like we we looked at the uh, the primary residence and and have not looked uh, sufficiently at the the laneway suite. We have requested that this item this uh, application be deferred for a thorough zoning examination. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, uh, Mr. Cattell. I forgot to ask you for each application we need to, we need you to state the name and address, please. Could you state your name? 
It's um, oh, I, the address of the Leaside Residence Association, 1601 Bayview Avenue. I would also mention that the councillor has written a letter I have with it. her objections I have to it. this to this yep. application. And then again, she does not get involved except where there are real real issues in in um, in the neighbourhood. Yeah, yeah, we have the letter. Thank you. So that's Jeff Cattell, and the address was mentioned. Any any question for this uh, speaker? No. Okay, next one is Andrew Smith. Andrew Smith, are you Hi, there? Yeah, this is Andrew oh, Smith. Oh, okay, please state your name and address for the record. Hi, my name is Andrew Smith. I live at 171 Randolph Road. Thank you. And tell us, please, if you agree with all this, what has been said, uh, but if you have something different, please go ahead. Thank you very much. Um, I support everything that Jeff uh, Jeff Cattell has said and Catherine has said. Um, this project is, while we all support development in Leaside, this has been one that I feel has jumped the gun. The developer, who is also the owner, uh, a young gentleman, and uh, developing a six-bedroom home plus a uh, a Langway suite um, smells to me that it is something that is going to be um, uh, flipped very quickly um, and the, there is potential for uh, the basement to be a separate suite uh, it shows um, an office and an exercise room but there are also two bathrooms with an ensuite in an office uh, somewhat strange so to me potentially this is going to be developed into three separate units three separate incomes um that's not what the side is uh, is all about uh, we're a single family homes i understand the laneway suite i am in support of laneway suites where it works where it doesn't work it shouldn't be permitted um uh, I work in the architecture industry. I see drawings like this all the time. I understand um, where the gray areas are. Um, the, uh, the, the the item that Jeff mentioned about the S, um, FSI, the uh, 0.68, um, that I, I agree with him wholeheartedly. That is based on the house. It is not based on the laneway, which obviously increase, increases the SF, uh, FSA for the whole site. Um, I am, uh, again, agree with Jeff that we sh this should be deferred and looked at thoroughly before it has been given any permission to, to continue. And the fact that they've already built the house right up to the second floor roof or the third floor roof joists which have been installed i you know smells that of of a of a project that has gone ahead without the approvals that are required and so i am suspect again of everything else that is going on with this project um so and and uh, in review, um, I am against this project, continuing the way it is, is, is done and until there is a sufficient review uh, completed. Thank you. Thank you. Any question for this uh, speaker? Okay. All right, Mr. Uh, Mr. McKenna, could you please come back and uh, address those concerns? Sure. Um, I guess I would say that the the first concern uh, about the process, um, nothing has been illegal. The site wasn't shut down. Um, the so I, I guess what I would say is that it typically uh, for these types of projects, because of how long it takes to get a committee of adjustment date, um, often what uh, people do is that they actually get permit for what they can do on site. Um, and then they go for a committee of adjustment date to revise that project to go a little bit larger. So in terms of what's been constructed, none of it has been illegal. Uh, none of it has contravened any bylaws or anything like that. That it's completely within in line with what is permitted on the site. And as of right, projects don't have a community approvals process. 
Um, so that's sort of like the first thing to say. Then the, the, the second would be to say that um, the site wasn't shut down. Uh, Yama had had a conversation with the building inspector. The building inspector knew that he was going in for a revision and a variance. And he said, you know, it just makes sense to, to not do it. So it was an informal con uh, conversation. There was absolutely no notice or anything like that. So that the, in terms of the process, it was the, the um, inspector said, it's probably best to, to just wait until you get your approvals and the approvals were coming up soon. So that's actually what happened. Um, in terms of the size of the property, um, you know, 85% versus 80%. I mean, that's, that's the very definition of very, very minor um, from like landscaping and everything to um, setbacks and things are bigger, but you know, if we're speaking about the councillor's comments, they were essentially the same as the staff report, which we've actually more than exceeded um, in terms of conceding. Like we could have had 8.8 .8 meters for height, but we decided to go with 8.5. I don't think that if we had started with this, um, this updated drawing package with the, the variances we were requesting today, that there would have been any letters um, from councillors or anything else, because we essentially would have completely gone with what the council, um, the committee, adjustment staff had requested. Um, in terms of three to four families, that's a bit inflammatory. This is for uh, one family. Um, and, you know, in the, in the basement, they could have guests. There's a guest bedroom down there. There's an office space, guest bedroom kind of can be used for whatever. There's no kitchen down there. Um, there there's nothing like that. But that being said is that, um, and, and for the demographic of moving into this home, it's not, it's not something that's not permitted. Obviously, we're not going for it, but if, if Yama had wanted to, he could have gone in without any need for a variance for a secondary suite. So that's not really an issue. Uh, in terms of the laneway suite, he's he's practically almost 100% meeting the laneway suite requirement. He's just slightly off for the landscaping, but he's also providing porous paving um, in that location. So in terms of like water porosity of the site, it's actually significantly increased from what it originally was. So a lot of this is um, maybe the perception of how things have gone is a bit of an issue. And certainly the higher numbers were um, very high compared to what's been permitted. I think the highest I found for FSI was seven, uh, 0 0.76 that was permitted. So obviously, or maybe uh, 7.4. Um, so asking for 0.86 is really quite a lot, but obviously Yama has completely conceded all of that. So he was reasonable with the inspector saying that you should probably wait, so he did. And then when the, the council, uh, not the council, sorry, the committee of adjustment staff told us to reduce the size of the building and we did. Um, so I, I don't really know what else to say at this point um, because we've pretty much conceded on all of the major points. Okay, so we'll have the, uh, we'll have the members uh, see if they have any question. Any question for this gentleman? No, if not, can I have a motion please? Okay, Mr. Klassen, please, please have his hand. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I appreciated the comments from everyone, and obviously this is perhaps somewhat uh, a new project in terms of the laneway suite. Um, in reading over the proposal and the changes that have been made, I've been convinced that this is in keeping with what is proposed for the neighborhood. And I'm going to follow the staff recommendations. So I'm going to move that this be approved subject to variance three and variance, uh, uh, variance six being eliminated. A variance two is changed to 0 0.68. Thank you. That's it. Okay. Second. Mr. Bartolo, second. All in favor? Unanimous. Okay. Sir, your application is approved unanimously based on those changes and the ones you made are repeated by the member. Do you want me to repeat them or you're okay? No, that's fine. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chair, I wonder if we could take the, the recess. You, you couldn't say it better than the time. Perfect. 
Okay, so we'll have uh, we'll have just a brief recess and we'll be right back. Five to ten minutes.
Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we're back to session. And we have here, we're into application number 28, which is 43 Wireless Crescent, application number 28. Um, here we have, uh, we have the agent. The members are not back yet. Yeah. Okay, we don't have the quorum yet. Okay, we have the quorum now. Okay, Aida Evangelista, are you there? Miss Evangelista? We're in item number 28, which is 43 one less, and the agent registered here is Aida Evangelista, are you there? Hi, Mr. Chair, Aida Evangelista, members, on behalf of the owner of 43 one less. Very good. And uh, yeah, could, could you state your own name, please? Yeah, I mean, your own address? Sure. It's um, Ivy Evangelista, 40, uh, sorry, 53 Bentworth Avenue. Bentworth Avenue, thank Toronto. you. Toronto. Thank you. Okay, so we have, um, we have here the uh, application. It seems straightforward. We have one variance, but there are some objections, mm -hmm. and we have one person registered. Mm -hmm to speak, so could you please give us a short presentation before we bring the other speaker? Sure. So, um, 43 wireless uh, in the materials that I submitted, what I did was um, I showed you, because what we're proposing is just to close um, and add a fourth bedroom on the interior of the home. We are not changing absolutely nothing to the envelope of the home. Everything stays as it is. All we are doing is there was an um, area at the back um, that was uh, open to below, and we are just adding that fourth, that fourth bedroom. Uh, the owner did get a building permit for this property, and during the process of getting that building permit, it was determined that there is that demand for that fourth bedroom um couple of well um, more than a couple families um have been very interested in home in the community however the year everyone is stepping more to the side of a multi-generational home and that additional space is required but i would like to add that we are not changing absolutely anything to the exterior of the home. It is strictly the interior and it's uh, 21.3 square meters that we are adding um, in that back corner. Um, I would like to add, I did do a reach, uh, reach out to uh, the area neighbors 
uh, with packages, identifying, you know, what it was that we were proposing. And what we're proposing here is consistent with, uh, you know, there are homes in the neighborhood um, on Wanless and on Buckingham, which is right across the street, um, with FSIs of 0.59 up to 0.63. So what we're proposing is characteristic. As I mentioned, we are not changing anything to the exterior of the home. Um, we did meet with the owners um, next door at 45, and they did have some concerns because, you know, the topography of the land here is undulating. So there were some concerns with, you know, permeability and drainage, which I believe that we did address that um, with the owners. And now, right now, as the house sits, it sits right on the lot line, right? So now we're going to, with the new home, we are coming inside the lot line, which will allow for much more light air space. It doesn't have anything to do with what we are proposing here today, but I just wanted to let the members know that we did have, and I did have a fulsome conversation with the neighbors and I believe that we have come up with, you know, various um, solutions. And with this, Mr. Chair, members, I do respectfully submit that what we are proposing uh, to add the 21 uh, square meters to the second floor uh, is characteristic to the neighborhood, um, will fit and will not um, impose on neighboring property as the envelope does remain exactly the same. Okay, thank you. Uh, just for curiosity, you say we're not changing anything, we're just adding. It said here the application mm -hmm. is for, to construct a new dwelling. What's that? No, they, so to construct a new dwelling, there is, this, this will be a new dwelling, but the proposal that you have in front of you is just to add an additional 21 square meters to the new home. To the same home that you call it a new dwelling? On the, on the interior, yes. Oh, okay. They call it a new dwelling, uh, Mr. Chair, because the, although we do have the building permits, we haven't started the construction yet at all. We have done nothing yet. Um, we do have the building permits. However, we haven't gone through the process. So, um, you know, technically. That's what's um, called. As far as the okay. city is concerned. Yes. Okay. Yes. Got it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, and we have one uh, one member to speak here. One, uh, I mean, one speaker, and um, and we'll mm -hmm. call we'll call you back. Okay, Mr. Lotz. Okay. Lotz full graph. Are you there? Lotz full graph. He's from the uh, LPRA development. Uh, yeah, he doesn't. He doesn't appear to be present. He is not there. Chair. Okay. All right. So, members, we have here one variance. Uh, there are some uh, letters of objection, but uh, there is nothing else. So, I don't have anything except one variance. Could you please uh, any any question to this uh, speaker? No speaker. No con no condition. No uh, no questions. So, can I have a motion then, Miss uh, Tarodi? Yes. Yes, to you, Mr. Chair, I would like to put forward a motion to approve this application with um, with no condition. Thank you. Second? Ms. Sankar, second. All in favor? Opposed? Mr. Bartolo, you didn't, I'm, I'm, I didn't see I'm, your I'm hand. I'm not opposed, Mr. You're Chair. For, are you for? I just, uh, I, the connection was in and out for a good chunk of that, so I can just like abstain from this one. I, did not, I didn't hear the full testimony over the, over the system. So you're abstaining, okay. All right, he didn't He didn't hear the testimony. Okay, so so we have three, uh, three uh, members are approving it. So, Ms. Evangelista, your application is approved and there is no conditions. Thank you, Mr. Chair, members. Okay. Thank you, bye-bye. Thank you, bye-bye. Number 29, which is 17, Windy Crescent, application number 29. And here we have 
one speaker, Barry Goldman. Are you there? Good afternoon, Mr. Chair, members of the committee. It's Good. Barry Goldman speaking. I am the architect and the agent for this application. And um, your, your address, please. Leave the application. Oh, sorry, carry on. Your address, please. Oh, uh, 321 Carlaw Street, Unit 102. Is Thank you. Address. Thank you. Uh, so just one second. We have here um, four variances, staff report only condition, and uh, four is three, condition number two. That's all I have on these here. Members, do we need a presentation? No? Okay. Uh, Mr. Goldman, we don't need the presentation. Do you want to add something before we move to decision? Uh, I'll just add that we have the consent of all the adjacent neighbors. It came in too late for it to fall in your hands, but it's included in the file now. Please proceed. Thank you. Any any question to the speaker? Or if not, can I have a motion? Ms. Ms. Atarodi, please. Yes, to you, Mr. Chair, I would like to put forward a motion to approve this application with only one staff condition that the, the proposal be constructed a substantial accordance with the site plan drawing uh, submitted to the, to the committee and also for a three to uh, also tie to for its report. Thank you. Second, Ms. Uh, Mr. Klassen, all in favor? Opposed? Okay, so your application is approved and uh, just subject to, uh, to forestry. Thank you very much. Item number 30, which is 532 Delorraine Avenue, application number 30. And here we have just one speaker the agent, Drew uh, Laszlo, are you there? Yes, I am. Good afternoon. Okay, can you please repeat your name and address for us? Sure, I'm Drew Laszlo, agent for the owner. Address is 3317 Young Street. Thank you. So we have here, this is a new dwelling, four variances, transportation, no no, re no objection, forestry report, condition one and three, seven letters of support and one letter of objection. Members, do we need a presentation here? No? Okay. Uh, sir, I don't see anyone for presentation. So uh, do you have anything to add or we go straight to the decision? You know what? I would like to add uh, just a bit. I'd like to give a small uh, explanation regarding variance number two, the coverage variance, if I may. Two seconds. You want, you want to have what? I would just like to speak briefly about variance yeah, number Yeah, please, two. please. You have your you have the right to speak. So we I'll give you the uh, your your five minutes. Say whatever you want. Okay. okay. Thank you very much. So variance number two. Uh, so we're asking for thirty six point two percent coverage, where thirty percent is permitted. Uh, generally, the approved lot coverages for the street tend to range from thirty three to 37 percent. Uh, an example of this is numbers 522 and 528. They were both granted 36 percent in the past. Um, we do conform to the front yard setback, the required rear yard setback, west side setback, half of the east side setback, and our house, um, just for the committee's information, is actually over 10 feet shorter than kind of your typical house, okay? And what the bylaw permits or quite a bit, our depth is quite a bit less. We've spoken to planning staff or I've spoken to planning staff multiple times. They have no issues with this. And as mentioned, we have seven letters of support. So I feel uh, the proposed coverage is justified in this case. Very good. Okay, good move. I had uh, the only note I had is for the uh, coverage. Uh, the FSI was to point, I mean, the uh, coverage was uh, was uh, 30% and you have 36.2. That's the only concern I had. So so you covered it and see members, do we have any question? Ms. Uh, Taroji, yes, do you have uh, question or motion? Yes. 
No, I, I would like to ask an explanation for variance number three, which is the east side yard setback 1.22 versus 1.8 meter. Yes, of course. Um, so we're just asking for an extra two feet. It's really uh, for about the front half of the house. Beyond the front half, our setback is actually greater than what the bylaw permits. We only need to be 1.8 meters away, but we are two, proposing 2.29 meters for the rear half of the east side setback. Yes, perfect. You can see it. Uh, I wish I could point and touch it, but it's it's pretty clear. So the, the four feet we're asking for the 1.22 meters. It's only for kind of a bit more than the front half, exactly. But beyond that, we are beyond what the bylaw permits as far as the setback. Good. Okay. Thank thank you. Any other question? So if no question, and uh, can I have a motion then? Mr. Klassen? Yes, thank you, Mr. T Chair. This is minor. It does meet all the tests. There's obvious support from the neighbors. Uh, I'd like to move to approve it, and uh, it'll be also subject to urban forestry. Thank you. Second? Mr. Bartolo, second. All in favor? Opposed? Mr. Tarod is opposing. Okay, so your application is approved subject to forestry. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, so we finished number one, yeah. Item number 32, which is 140. Erdry Road, application number 32. And uh, here we have 32. We have here uh, the agent is not registered. So uh, could we uh, could we say who's, no, I'm, who's there? I'm sorry, I'm here. Enrique Valencia. Okay, are you the agent? The agent for 140 yes. Okay, because he wasn't re you didn't register before. Okay, so Enrique Valencia, could you please uh, uh, state your address? Yes, it's uh, twenty eight Commodore Avenue. Thank you. Okay, so we have we have two more speakers uh, on this item. So could you please give us a short presentation, and uh, and then we'll see what they have to say. Absolutely. Uh, first off, good afternoon, Mr. Chair and members of the committee. Uh, I'd just like to start off with saying that, uh, well, my client is trying to go for a, basically a parking pad in front. And uh, she very innocently called in on the, uh, on another application. So you can reference the application at 138 Airdrie Road, where they were going for the exact same thing. And um, basically from there, she uh, she announced that, uh, well, if this one got approved, then she would also like to get approved as well. Uh, from there, she came up to me. We we started the whole application process. We did our due diligence in regards to getting in touch with right-of-way management. Uh, they gave us a list of many other uh, parking pads all along Air, uh, Airdrie Road. And uh, well, I can say legally, at least, there's at least seven of them. Uh, on top of that, transportation did come to the site. Uh, one of the worries was the the hydrant, and uh, you can see based off their report that they have no objection with the parking pad that we're plan we're proposing. And apart from that, uh, we, um, you know, apart from that, uh, I believe that's that's it. That's it in terms of the the history of it. Yeah. Okay, um, yeah, we uh, we just have the uh, we just have the two variances for front yard parking and transportation. We have a report. There's no objection. So let's see let's see what this uh, what these people have to say here, and we'll get you back. Okay. Okay. We have Angela Schaefer. Are you there? Angela Schaefer. Mr. Moderator, is she? Yeah, I'm here. Huh? 
Angela Schaefer? I can't, I can't seem to unmute. Okay, so please please tell us your name and your address and tell us what's your problem. Oh, with, okay, your address and, and, and name. 192 Airdrie Road, Angela Schaefer. Okay, so tell us what's your concern about this application. Yes, I don't have any concern at all. No. I think it, it should be approved. You just came to, okay, that's good. Okay, thank you. And uh, the next one is Tom Flannery. Are you there? Tom Flannery. Hi, uh, my name is Tom Flannery. Okay. Are you? Um, I also live at 192. I didn't know my wife was going to be um, making okay. a comment on this. I I'm in favor of the uh, application. I'm in favor of getting cars off the streets. Um, and um, this uh, front yard parking pass permit is in, in compliance or in, in mm, whatever uh, all the other houses on the street will look like. I'm sorry, we don't hear you clearly. Are you for it or do you have a problem? I, I am definitely for it. I think it fits with the neighborhood and it should be a Thank you. Okay, you're in support. You. All right, thank you. So, uh, Mr. Valencia, can you come back here, please? Yes, sir. Okay, so we have the two registered here. Uh, they're actually uh, for the, uh, they're not objecting to it, so so I don't have any question. Let's see the members. Members, any question? If not, can I have a motion, please? Ms. Uh, Tarodi? Sure, you, Mr. Chair. Um, um, uh, this is a very straightforward application and transportation have no objection. Therefore, I would like to put forward a motion to approve this application with with no other condition. No condition. Thank you. Uh, second. Mr. Bartolo, second. All in favor? Okay. Uh, unanimously. Um, so. What? Yeah, she said, she, she left her hand, yeah. yeah. Um, Ms. Ataroji, you had your hands on, right? She's the one who made the motion. Okay, thank you. So you're, uh, Mr. Valen I mean, Valencia, your, your application is approved and there is no conditions. Thank you very much. Okay. Okay, 23. Application number 33, which is 160 Finch Avenue West. And here we have, uh, we have just the uh, agent and the supervisor are both on the same uh, thing. Mr. Okay, NG, no, NG, Mikhail, are you yes. there? Good afternoon, good afternoon. Hello. Good, your name and your address, please. Yep, it's Angie McHale from LJ Architectural Partners representing the board uh, from 310 Spadina. Thank you. With you is registered the, uh, Lou uh, Casse. Uh, who's going to speak, you or, 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 or Lou? I will be speaking. Lou is here for support if need be. Thank you. Okay. So we have here um, four variances. Transportation, before they were asking for deferral. Now they're okay. There is no, they have no objection. Staff report has conditions uh, just to approve in accordance with NOAC, which is the uh, uh, notice of approval condition, which is which attached to the site plan. I think you're you're aware of that, and okay. th and there is no other thing. So, uh, members, do we need the presentation here? No. Okay. Uh, we don't need the presentation. And uh, do you want to make any comments before we move to the presentation, to the decision? No, I'd just like to comment on the condition uh, requested by community planning. We have no objection. We're happy to report that we have met with city staff earlier this week. We were able to resolve a number of the items listed in the last paragraph of the report. So we're well underway. Uh, we believe we're getting fairly close to uh, site plan approval. So we have no objection and happy to move the forward. Condition. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you. Any comment, Miss? No comment. So can I have a motion, please? Miss Sankar, please. 
Yes, through you, Mr. Chair, um, and given the October 6th transportation report of no objections um, and no one here to contest this application, I'll put forward a motion to approve this application and make it subject to the October 4th staff report that states approval be subject to the issuance of the notice of approval condition for the site plan control application by the director of community planning and um, uh, that's it thank you thank you second mr bartolo seconding all in favor okay unanimous so your application is approved unanimously with that condition of the staff report okay Thank you very much, everyone. You're, Have a you're good welcome. Day. Application number 24, which is 175 Oak Street. There was a, um, a mix up on this because apparently originally it was 620 Danda Street East and now is 175 Oak Street. And here we have Allison Tutor. Are you there? Yes, I'm here. Okay, could you please state your name and address for us? My name is Allison Shooter. I'm a planner and associate with Bouse Fields, Inc. And our address is 3 Church Street, Suite 200 in Toronto. Thank you. We have, uh, we have one more. Uh, oh, we have a couple more speakers. Uh, yeah, we have one, two, three, four more speakers. So therefore, we need you to make a, a presentation before you, you move on, okay? Okay, um, I've submitted uh, some presentation slides if they could just be brought up. I'm sorry, what did you say? Sorry, I brought, I submitted a presentation um, last week um, for as supporting materials. If that can be brought up on the screen, just helps me okay. go through things clearly. Can you? Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Here we go. Great. Thank you. All right. So if you just want to scroll down a little bit to the, the site yeah. location map, which is page two. Yeah. Just speak slow. Uh, so just you, speak slowly, please. Don't go too fast. <laughs> yes, of course. Apologies. Um, so you can see here in red is the subject site. So we refer to it as Block 16 North um, within the Regent Park Plan of Subdivision. And uh, as you can see, it's within the Regent Park neighborhood boundary, which was in the east downtown area in Toronto. So as you can kind of understand from this image, the revitalization of Regent Park has been ongoing for many years now. Uh, there was a secondary plan approved in and a zoning bylaw approved in 2005, both of which were updated in 2014. And, and the overall vision for Regent Park is for a mixed use, mixed tenure and mixed income community. So, as can, you can see from the picture here, there are still some of the existing buildings. There are some lots that are vacant, including this site, as well as new buildings that have been completed in the last 10 years or so. Can go to the next slide. So the site, just this is just a little bit of a closer up view of the site. It's located on the south side of Oak Street between Tubman Avenue and Sumac Street. And it notably is the last remaining affordable housing block in the third phase of the Regent Park revitalization. So to the west of the site on the west side of Sumac Street is the, um, the central neighborhood Regent Park. And to the south is an under construction 29 story mixed use building. To the east is a recently completed 11 story residential building and to the north are a number of low rise apartment buildings that are original to the neighborhood. Those original buildings are planned for redevelopment in phases 4 and 5 of the Regent Park revitalization, which is yet to begin. And the current the zoning bylaw currently permits 2 22 story towers on the north side of Oak Street in the vicinity of the subject site with mid rise buildings between 6 and 10 stories to the immediate north. Next. So the proposed development for the subject site consists of a predominantly residential building that steps up to 15 stories in height along the west property line abutting Sumac Street. The new building will be owned and managed by TCHC, meaning that the proposed residential units will all be affordable rental units. In addition to these residential units, the proposed building will also feature a small office space on the ground floor, as well as an integrated satellite energy plant to be owned and operated by Regent Park Energy Inc which is a subsidiary of TCHC that manages the district energy system in Regent Park. Next. So the site plan here illustrates the various building heights that are proposed for this site. They're all within one building, but there's quite a bit of stepping that happens. 
So there's a one story portion in the center of the site, stepping up to three stories along Tubman Avenue, seven and eight stories along Oak Street, and finally 15 stories along Sumac. So overall, the proposed building will contain 213 residential units, 466 square meters of office space, the integrated energy plant, 97 parking spaces, and an internal loading space. Next. So the proposal for the subject site has evolved during the detailed design stage, resulting in the current application, which is the second minor variance application for this project. The original application for the site was approved in November 2020 and permitted a number of design and technical variances for a 13-story building. Earlier this year, TCHC unexpectedly received additional funding for 24 extra affordable units within the proposed building. In order to accommodate these units, two extra stories have been added to the previously planned 13-story component of the building, but there are no other changes to the proposed building massing from the November 2020 approval. So the intent of the four variances required as part of the current application is to replace four of the previously approved variances and all four relate back to the additional two stories of residential units. Next slide. So the first variance, is, first variance which is kind of a technical variance, um, is respects, to, uh, oh, sorry, I'm gonna go quicker. <laughs> um, just this is about the parking in the building. So as you can see, we're actually conforming with the bylaw more closely than we were in the previous application, which approved 19 non-residential spaces, and now we're looking for a maximum of 12. Next. Sorry, next slide. So the building height, which is variances two and three, um, deals with the variance two is the measured height and three is the number of stories. And so this diagram just illustrates the requested variances, the previously approved approved variances and what the permitted height is under the zoning bylaw. Um, so you can see here how the current application only relates to those two additional stories in green. Next. So this shadow study just shows you the additional shadow impacts that are resulting from these two additional stories. The additional shadows are in orange, which you can barely see here as they're very limited additional shadows resulting from the proposal. Next slide also shows some more shadows. Okay, I'll ask you to summarize, please, and they will come back to you after we hear the other the other speakers. We have okay. your, you you, um, you you passed your five minutes already. Okay. Uh, apologies. So just uh, overall, the proposed variances will help to facilitate intensification and the optimization of public land um, with new affordable housing in Regent Park that will help to result in a complete and balanced community. It's Thank okay. You. We'll come back to you, please. Okay. We'll co we'll come back yep. to you. Let's uh, let's hear the other ones. Um, so we have here um, Brian Lim. Are you there? Brian Lim. Mr. Moder. Mr. Chair. I'm sorry. He's not present. No. He's not in. Okay. How about next one, which is Stephanie Biddy? Is she there? Stephanie Biddy, are you there? I am. Okay, can you please state I your... I am, yep. Yeah, please state your name and address for us. Uh, my name is Stephanie Beatty and I live at 260 Sackville Street. Okay, and can you tell us what's your, what's your concern about this application? Um, my concern is just really, um, and, and maybe I'm confused, but on the, the mailing, um, it looked like the height increases were fairly significant from 20 meters in one instance to 30 and from 30 to 48. And also just on the ground that, you know, we live in, I live in Regent Park and it's a community under revitalization and there's supposed to be a principle of consultation and communications with community members about changes and there really haven't hasn't been that happening. You know, the density of uh, the community was increased by 50% without any public consultation back in 2014. And, you know, we've been in meetings, I'm also part of the Regent Park Neighborhood Association, we've been in meetings with uh, Tridel and with TCHD and, and previously with Daniels and have heard nothing about this change. And we just, I heard about the mailing. I never received the mailing. I don't think anybody in my building received the mailing. I don't really know anyone in the community who received the mailing. 
except the property management company sent one out and then we sent one out and it looks like it was issued on the 27th of September and email submissions were closed within three days. So it just feels to me that there isn't any community consultation, um, an opportunity to explain these changes to the community um, and to give us any advance warning. So my concern is really on, the, on those grounds. Okay, so uh, of course we don't have any control on the uh, on the mailing, and those, uh, the only problem we have is variances in front of us. We have to decide on. So, any question to this uh, speaker? No. Okay, we'll go. Any to questions? The, no, they have no questions. So we'll go to the next speaker, and then we'll get back the agent. So the next speaker, uh, she what zero. You registered very late here. Are you are you there? Mr. Chair, they did register very late and they are not present. They're not present. Okay, they had an email sent before. Okay. And mm -hmm. uh, Vanessa, yeah. Vanessa Ling, are you there? Vanessa, Vanessa is also not she's also not there. Okay. Correct. Okay, thank you. So we're back to the agent. All we had is is Brian Lim and Allison. Okay, so could you please, uh, any, uh, could you come back and say the all the only person who spoke is uh, Stephanie Biddy. Could you please address those concerns and we'll move on for the questions. Yes, and thank you to Stephanie for for coming out and speaking on the application. Um, I you know. I'm the planning consultant for the applicant and I don't have control over the consultation process that's taken place. Um, and you know, I apologize for any, any miscommunication or lack of notice on the application. Um, just to maybe say that the, you know, the changes to the Regent Park plan that happened in 2014 were part of a, a major rezoning application that was put through the city and so consultation would have taken place through that, through the city's mandated process. Um, and I know that additional consultation will be taking place as the, the new developers look to the four, phases four and five, which are to the north of this site. This property isn't part of that consultation that's happening currently. Um, it is separate and you know minor, and which is why we came through the, the committee of adjustment, which has its own consultation requirements. So. Okay, thank you. So we have the four variances here and there is a, uh... The engineering report uh, uh, conditions, you're okay with that, huh? Yep, we have no concerns with the conditions. Okay, so let's see what the members have to say. Any question for this speaker? Mr. Mr. Klassen, please. Uh, yes, I have a question. I'm just interested in the planning rationale of adding two stories to the tallest of the structures rather than say adding one story to one of the shorter structures and another story to one of the other shorter structures. I can't talk to it from a, you know, a technical point of view in terms of the, I imagine it had something to do with the design of the building and the functioning of the building. Um, lower for, floors tend to have more difficulty in terms of you know, getting the staircases and the elevators in the correct location and all of that sort of thing. Um, but from a planning perspective, I think it does make more sense to kind of continue to orient the height to the one location within the site that is the least going to be the least impactful in terms of it in the surrounding community. This, the lower portions of the building, they're actually quite larger. And so adding a floor there would result in maybe additional shadowing and then also impacting the um, kind of the characters of the street. I think in the Regent Park secondary plan, they've got a street hierarchy and Oak Street is a higher hierarchy than say, um, sorry, one of the, the, like one of the side streets that it steps down to. So I think the idea is to have the highest height in one area stepping down to the lower area. And then in addition to that, the, the proposed 15 story building is gonna be kitty corner across the street from what is currently permitted to be a 22 story tower. So trying to keep within kind of height districts and the hierarchy of streets. Any, Thank you. Any other question? If not, can I have a motion there, please? Mr. Bartolo. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, in hearing the, uh, the 
the uh, proposal put forward by the speaker there. Uh, I'm inclined to agree with the position that they've taken here. I think it's in fitting uh, with what's been approved and what's ongoing uh, within the local area. Um, and then uh, one small case actually improving the parking uh, situation there. So I'm going to put forward a motion to uh, approve this application uh, subject to the requirements of the uh, engineering memo. Thank you. Second. Ms. Sankar, first, second. All in favor? Okay, unanimous. Okay, your application unanimously approved subject to the condition of the engineering report for conditions, okay? Great, thank you so much. Okay. That's 34. Application number 35, which is 68, Hopedale Avenue, application 35, and here we have the uh, Lance Caprillian. Are you there? I am, Mr. Are, Chairman. Are you the agent? He's not shown here. I am uh, the agent, yes. Okay, so could you please state your name again and your address so we can move on? My name is Lance Caprillian. My address is 180 Shaw Street, Suite 315, Toronto. Thank you. So we have two more uh, two more speakers here. If you'd like to make a presentation, then we can call them back. Fair enough. So the application before you is to replace an existing shed that is in uh, poor condition and needs to be replaced uh, for structural reasons. And so what we have uh, proposed is to uh, replace that shed with one that is slightly larger and that is uh, better looking and more appropriate for the uses that uh, the owners need. So, this is this is a it's an interesting lot. There's um, there's a shared driveway that serves uh, three houses, uh, one of which is actually behind this one, and that's their main access. So, it's a it's an interesting location. Uh, the owners have a legal parking spot in the front yard, so the appropriate use for this for them is a is as an office and um, a family space. So that's how we've proposed it. We have uh, variances for coverage for landscape area. So maybe I'll just go through the variances very quickly. The first one is um, the soft landscaping. We're, we're not making much of a change to that, uh, the the proposed shed is slightly larger than the existing shed uh, on the, uh, in the sense that we're, we're widening it to take advantage of the setbacks, but we're essentially leaving the landscaping that is usable in place. And part of the backyard is uh, an easement to the driveway, and we obviously have no control over that. So it's a bit of a, it, it, it skews the numbers down for us. And um, uh, so I, I think that really what we're doing in, in that sense is we're not we're not making a, a significant change. It's a very minor change to to the the soft landscaping, uh, and no change at all to the usable soft landscaping there. Um, the lot coverage of the ancillary building is going up because, as I said, we're enlarging it slightly uh, to take advantage of the width that we're permitted to setbacks there. And that that's also uh, affects the lot coverage as well, the overall lot coverage, which both of those are actually um, in excess of the permitted amounts now. Uh, the fourth variance is for the height of the um, the the doors. We're we're sorry, no. Yeah, there, so there's that those two variances are related. We're actually proposing to keep the variance at 2.9. I think the original one had a change in there, but there it's 2.9 for both doors, one of which serves the backyard and one of which is a shed um, off the side and they're the same height. Um, and the parking space, as I said, there's an existing parking space in the front and that is a legal parking spot and um, the owners can, can, will continue to use that spot. And so there's no need for parking space back here. Um, I should also say that the owners have been very, very motivated to engage their neighbors. Um, one of the things that they did do was to, uh, on the site, they, one of the neighbors has a driveway, uh, well, they showed the driveway, has a garage opposite this, 
And in order to allow that neighbor um, ease of access in and out, uh, the owners of 68 Oakdale uh, agreed uh, and asked me to set back the fence so that um, there could be space for them to back up. So um, they, they are motivated to ensure that this works for the neighbors and they have quite a number of uh, letters of support in the file, uh, which tests to that, that um, attitude to their neighbors. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, we have here a um, TRCA condition and recommendations that dated from May 17. Are you uh, are you aware of that, or that was taken care of? Yes, we um, we have TRCA approval. Okay, we've also got an arborist report. We've we've uh, dealt with those uh, related items already, so okay. we are aware of them. Thank you. All right, so let's. Um, We'll bring you back after we hear from the other uh, speakers if they're if they're available. Uh, Thank you, Mary uh, Drulias. Are you there? Hello. Yes, I am. Can you please state your name and address for us? Yes, my name is Mary Drulias from 70 Hopedale Avenue. Um, I'm the neighbor right beside uh, them. So. As uh, Mr. Caprielin mentioned, it is uh, an odd situation because it is a three-way mutual right-of-way driveway. Um, and I, I have no opposition to what they'd like to build. Um, but as per the drawings, it, it, current drawings, it would prevent me from having driving or vehicle access to my garage. And I have spoken um, with the homeowners, and they have agreed to make the modifications to allow me the access because um, you just can't back up with the way that the drawings are currently. So, um, you know, my expectation is that there's a process, you know, to allow for uh, my full access with the adjustments that are going to be made. Um, and that's it. That's it. Okay. But I don't know what that would look like. Like, if you can, you know, help me sort of understand what that looks like. Okay, so we'll have the, uh, the we'll have the agent explain about the access. Uh, in the meantime, any question for this uh, speaker? No. Okay, so the next one is Paul Gibson. Are you there? Paul Gibson. Yes, this is Paul Gibson. Hello. Could you please state your name and address for us? My name is Paul Gibson. I live at 61 Hopedale Avenue. Okay, thank you. Tell us what's your concern about this application. Uh, no concerns. I've looked over the paperwork the city sent me and I've spoken with the homeowner and it all looks like a, a reasonable project and I approve. Excellent, thank you. Okay, thank you. so we'll get back Mr. Caprillian. Lance Caprillian, are you back? The agent, Lance Caprillian, are you there? I hope you didn't think we finished with the application. Mr. Moderator, is he still there? Uh, thank you, thank okay. you. I was just, un I was just still muted, so. Yeah, well, um, well, you have to respond to the concern. Uh, one is yes, I, one is okay with you. He said he's, he has no problem. And the other one regarding the access to her driveway, could you please respond to that? Absolutely. So um, whatever changes that neighbor requires, we will be making. We've already, uh, we heard about this yesterday that what we were proposing to do was not, um, essentially what we need to do is we need to create a setback on on 68 Hopedale for her to back her car up onto. And we did do that, but I understand uh, from the owners that actually it's it's not exactly in the right spot. So we essentially have to shift over this recess that we've created in the fence to allow her to back up her car in the, in the, in the correct location. Uh, and we've already laid out an option to do that. And um, we'll, there's no question that we'll make sure that it works for her. So, so you now I, so, I should also, I, sorry, go ahead. So you you'll work together with her to, to solve the problem. Eh? Absolutely. Okay. All right. So let's see what other members have. Um, members, any question for this uh, speaker? 
I don't see all the members here. Uh, who's missing? Oh yeah, okay. All right, so can I have a, if no question, can I have a motion then, please? Mr. Bartolo? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, given the kind of a uh, strange configuration here and some of the requirements to uh, work collaboratively with the neighbors, um, I'm going to put forward a motion to approve this uh, application. I do believe it's minor uh, in nature, especially given the, uh, like I said, the odd configuration and uh, the site specific requirements. So I'm going to put forward a motion to approve. Thank you. Second, Mr. Klassen, all in favor? Okay. So, uh, sir, your application is unanimously approved. Thank you very much. Thank Have you. a great afternoon. Thank you. Good afternoon. And uh, number 36, which is 68 Winchester Street, application 36. And here we have uh, uh, John Budinski. Are you there? Mr. Chair, if I may, the uh, deputant that's registered with respect to this application is not present, Liang Ma. The, so John Budinski is not, uh, the agent is not, is not present, huh? Eh? No, no, the, the agent is Liang Ma. Oh, okay, she's not here, okay. Is not present, correct. Thank you, thanks for letting us know. So we have only the agent. Uh, John Budinski, are you there? Uh, yes, okay. good afternoon, Mr. Chair. Good afternoon, could you please Earth. state your name and address for us? John Budinski of Douglas Design Studio. 317 Carlton Street. I'm the agent. Thank you. So we have here two story addition and we have three uh, three variances. Uh, there was a question of heritage planning, urban design and city. Could you could you cover that uh, with a small presentation so we can move on because we have no no other person present to speak. Yeah, absolutely. It should be quick. Uh, can we look at the side elevation please? Is that possible? Either way, it's uh, the addition's essentially a two foot projecting rear bay window in the center of the rear elevation. Um, it's set back from slightly from both sides of the existing semi detached uh, Van Gable house. It also isn't the full height of the existing ceiling. Uh, you can see a little dark sliver along the, uh, the right side of the elevation. Um, we've done everything we could to protect the heritage value and uh, the public realm. The addition's not visible. We're not touching the front and the heritage report uh, says as much uh, the comments by heritage staff anyway. Uh, did you finish sir? Um, I think so. I, oh, I guess okay, I add, okay. Uh, we were waiting for you. We thought you you still have. Okay, so um, no, it's it's fairly straightforward. That, that's okay, and that's okay. Straightforward. Uh, members, any question for this uh, speaker? And if not, can I have a motion then, Mr. Klassen? Go ahead. Yes. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, this is minor. Uh, I'm. Uh, I've moved to approve it, but I will add the uh, request that Heritage Planning uh, proposed that approval be made subject to a condition requiring that the final, the final, the final, the final building, the final building permit that the drawings be to the satisfaction of Heritage Planning. Thank you. Uh, second, Ms. Ms. Sankar, all in favor? Okay, so your application is approved subject to that condition of heritage, okay? Thank you. You're welcome. That's 36. Application number 37, which is 33 Calendar Street, application number 37. And here we have one speaker, Eric Jensen, are you there? Uh, yes, I am. Hello. Your name, please state your name and address for us. Yes, my name is Eric Jensen. I'm the acting agent 
Uh, my address is 170 Indian Road Crescent in Toronto. Thank you. So we have here uh, just a third story addition, four variances and five letters of support, nothing else. Uh, members, do we need a presentation here? Mr. Chair, if I may, sorry to yeah. interrupt. There has been a late registration. Somebody else? By the name of, correct, uh, Jack S. Jack? Correct. Jack what? I, <clears throat> I'm going to butcher this name, Jack Sadwich. Sadwich, okay. Okay, Mr. Mr. Jack Sadwich, are you there? Jack Sadwich? Nate's presentation, does he still want to speak or not? He is present and unmuted. Oh, okay. Okay, try again, Mr. Jack Sadwich, are you there? Jack Sadwich. Yeah, are you, can you, can you please, can you, you please state your name and address? Jack Sedwich, are you there? Again, we'll give you one more minute. Mr. Jack Sadwich, are you there? It, look, it looks like you're, uh, you registered lately and uh, we don't hear you. Huh? Yeah, this is a straightforward uh, thing anyways. Okay, so members, we, uh, we, we can't reach the, uh, this uh, gentleman who registered late. We didn't have him on the list. And, um, and here, as we said, we have uh, four variances, five letters of support. There was nobody here registered for, uh, for uh, objections. So could you please uh, see if you have any question for, uh, for Ms. Sankar? Go ahead. Um, if Everybody's okay. I can make a motion on this application. Yeah. Okay, let me just yeah, see. Given Let's see the other uh, gentlemen. Are you? Do you have any questions, uh, Mr. Uh, Bartolo and Mr. Klassen? No. So, Ms. Mr. Ms. Sankar, please go ahead. Yes. Um, given that the debutante is not there, and given the numbers of letters of of um, you know the numbers of support as well as um, this being, to me, a, a, a minor application and meeting the four tests, I'll put forward a motion to approve this application without condition. Thank you. Second, Mr. Klassen, all in favor? Okay, sir, your application is approved unanimously. Thank you very much. No conditions. Okay, number, number 38, which is 18 Monroe Park Avenue, application number 38. And here we have the agent, David Milligan. Are you there? Good afternoon, uh, Mr. Chair. Yes, I'm here. Can you hear me? Oh, yeah. Could you please state your name and address? Yes, my name is David Milligan at 181 Bay Street, and I'm a solicitor at Ayrton Burles LLP. Okay, so we have here... Uh, three variances, 16 letters of objections, and seven letters of support for a third story addition. We have here one, two, three more speakers who are going to speak on this item. Could you please make a short presentation before we call them? Of course. Thank you. Um, my clients, Mr. Schofield and Ms. Warrington, have lived in this house for the past two years, and they're proposing renovations before you today to help them turn it into their dream home. 
They've received near unanimous support from their neighbors on Monroe Park, as well as no objections from planning staff on this, but we're sometimes somewhat surprised by the opposition they've been receiving from residents to the west of the property. So they've asked me to speak on their behalf today. The application before you is to add a third floor addition to an existing two story house to accommodate a new principal bedroom suite and third floor balcony. To provide some helpful background, my client obtained permits to add an eight foot rear addition to the house that did not require any variances. And they'd been constructing this addition when they decided to add a third floor to the design, which has triggered the three variances before you today. These three variances uh, I submit uh, each satisfy the four tests under the Planning Act and I intend to go through each of them. First, the proposal requires a variance to the side exterior main wall height of about 18 centimeters to accommodate the third floor. What's notable here is that the overall height of the building remains below the maximum height of the bylaw, which is 10 meters. The side wall height variance is triggered by the flat roof condition that's proposed at the rear of the house. And this was done to replicate the existing condition of the rear of the house. The plans were designed so that the house would maintain the design and style of the existing building and the permitted rear addition in order to maintain its character and relationship to its surroundings. The second variance for FSI is proposed to be increased from the existing 0.56 to 0.75 as a result of the third floor addition, whereas the bylaw only permits 0.6. The increase in GFA and the corresponding density is achieved, though, without increasing the footprint of the existing house and that permitted rear addition, without requiring any reduced setbacks or additional depth, and while staying below the maximum overall height permitted by the bylaw. As a result, the impact of this FSI variance will be negligible. Further, we've reviewed previous committee applications for FSI variances in the neighborhood. And this request falls completely within the range of recent approvals by the committee, which vary from about 0.65 to the highest of 1.29 um, within the neighborhood. In that sense, the proposed variance is consistent with the prevailing character of the neighborhood and is desirable and appropriate for the development of the property. Finally, a variance is needed to accommodate the proposed third story balcony at the rear of the house. This balcony will incorporate both a covered and uncovered portion and will be accessed accessed from the principal bedroom on the third floor. The purpose of the balcony is to enjoy views of the lake to the south, which is a common feature of many homes in the beaches community. A quick walk around the neighborhood if you were able to do so would reveal a number of large third floor decks and balconies designed for this exact purpose, many of which are larger than what's being proposed through this addition, including those existing at 6 Monroe Park, 11 Monroe Park, 21 Monroe Park, 45 Monroe Park, 47 Monroe Park, and 23 Glenfern, to name just a few. The balcony does not extend beyond the rear wall of the house and maintains nearly 15 meters of separation from the rear property line. Now, while we understand the concerns of the neighbors to the rear of the property about the impact on privacy and overlook, my client has already incorporated privacy planters on the south side of the balcony following discussions with city staff and is also willing to incorporate as a condition of approval privacy screening on the western end of the balcony to mitigate against any potential impacts uh, on their neighbors on Glenfern. In summary, the proposal maintains the footprints and design of the existing house and its permitted addition, while adding additional living and amenity space entirely in keeping with the continued growth and evolution of the street and its surroundings. In that way, it respects and maintains the character of the neighborhood and is consistent with the intent and purpose of the official plan. It adds a permitted third story and additional living space and density without further expanding the footprint of the existing building, avoiding any notion of overdevelopment of the land, which is consistent with the intent and purpose of the zoning bylaw. It proposes a relatively minor addition to an existing old house instead of a completely new build. This is a renovation instead of a replacement. And it does so while maintaining the front facade with its dormer look, its front porch and sweeping roof line, and maintaining a hundred year old sugar maple tree in the front yard. It preserves the existing character in a manner that is desirable and appropriate for the development of the property. And finally, it mitigates any potential minor impacts from the proposed rear, rear balcony through proposed screening and proposes other modest increases, otherwise modest increases in sidewall height and FSI that will not have a significant adverse impact on the surrounding neighbors. Thus, the variances are truly minor. 
Okay. So I hope the committee sees fit to approve this, and I'm happy to answer any of your questions. Okay, thank you. You just uh, you just were in your five minutes. Um, yeah, when you say the third uh, story uh, platform, this is a platform above the second story. Is that correct? That that is correct. It's it's off of the um, proposed. Yeah. Bed, so uh, so four. On the yeah, floor. four four square meters is required. I mean, is uh, is allowed. Why do you have twenty two? Can't you make it smaller? Uh, well, it's as I mentioned in my presentation, it's, it's relatively consistent with, with existing uh, second and third story balconies in, in the area. In the area. Um, it's, yeah, it, it's, uh, you know, uh, it, it doesn't protrude past the um, the side walls or the rear walls. Uh, it's not a, an overhanging balcony. It fits within the footprint. And and for that reason, I think that it's, it's appropriate okay. and desirable and, and any impacts can be mitigated. Okay, thank you. We'll see what the other speakers have to say and we'll bring you back, okay? We have here Susan, Susan Rudik, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Could you please state your name and Hello? address for us? Yeah, your name and address. Uh, yeah, my name is Susan Rudik and my address is 15 Glenfern Avenue. Thank you. Tell us what's your, what's your concern about this application. Yeah, um, I'm actually, I've been a resident of this neighborhood since 1994 and the building scale is completely out of proportion with our neighborhood. Uh, the back elevation looms over the northeast corner of Glenfern Avenue where I live. Um, I'm sure that people in Monroe Park uh, were quite fine with the application, but you have to think of this design kind of like a mullet where it's acceptable in the front, but the back is a whole other story going on. Even from the vantage point of our street side garden, this feels like an imposition, this, this addition. I worry about the precedent this mass, massing sets for our neighborhood, and I'm frankly mystified as to how the construction of this property <clears throat> was able to proceed without the approved um, approval of variances, without application for variances, and similar concerns have been raised by several of my neighbors on the street. I want to add that in 2012, I was part of a long process of Beaches neighborhood consultation by the City of Toronto in a series of stakeholder and community meetings from June to September 2012. This was a design charrette that included over 250 residents of this community. The Queen Street East Visioning Study, as it was called, which extends from Costville Avenue to Nursewood Road, um, <clears throat> which um, has um, part of the city initiated official plan amendment, proceeded in its final report with a recommendation that the street, Queen Street, be divided into three distinct areas, which, and a quote, um, uh, reflect, uh, um, establish, um, are established with compatible development, redevelopment, and built form policies that reinforce the existing character of the area of a, as a whole and each of the three precincts. The Balmy Beach Precinct, which is the section of Queen intersecting Monroe Park, was designated with a somewhat lower intensification in keeping with the existing residential character of that neighborhood. We now have a building under construction at 18 Monroe Park whose size and massing and um, extraordinarily massive deck, particularly as it's viewed from Glenfern, is out of keeping with that character. Moreover, it is a flat roof building and the massive deck overlooks our street. Um, I really uh, am concerned about the kind of precedent that this establishes for the community which was consulted in a very lengthy, lengthy process in uh, 2012 to maintain the existing character of the neighborhood. I think we do not need the beaches turned into a series of monster homes. I worry about these as energy hogs, um, quite apart from questions of privacy and um, the, the flat roof uh, massing. And I feel this goes against the intention of the city to mitigate climate change in, in its new designs. Thank you. Thank you. Any question for the speaker? No? Uh, not really, except um, the use of no, no, I, I keep I'm talking so, about permits. I'm sorry, I asked the, our members if they have any question for you. Oh, I see. Okay. <laughs> any question for the speaker? No? Okay. So we'll get the uh, we get the agent back and he'll explain uh, and he'll address your concern. The next speaker is David Bruce. Are you there? David Bruce. Is he around, Mr. Moderator?
David Bruce. It would appear, yeah, it would appear that he's present. His he's a called in user. Uh -huh. He's un, he's unmuted. However, okay, we'll try again. Thank you, thank you, uh, Mr. David Bruce. Are you there? Okay, we'll go to the next one and we'll come back to uh, Mr. Bruce. Eva Kralitz, Kralitz, are you there? Uh, yes, I am. Okay, could you please uh, and I just, could, could you please state your name sorry. and address? Okay, my name is Eva Kralitz. I live at 30 Glenfern Avenue, and I just want to let you know David Bruce of 28 Glenfern Avenue said he could not um, continue to hold, so he's not going oh, to be on the call. Thank you, thank you for letting us know. So please tell us what's your concern about this very uh, um, application. I, okay, I, I would really appreciate it if you could pull up some pictures that were loaded to the objections section of the application information center. I did not realize I couldn't do screen shares this morning. So I had um, those pictures loaded and if not the pictures that were submitted with my written application, that would be very helpful. So um, as you're doing that, I will start. Um, 30 Glenfern Avenue is the property directly to the rear of 18 Monroe Park. The owners who are also a contractor and a realtor developing this property. And contrary to what the agent said, have not been living in it for two years. They barely lived in it. They bought it to develop, have been acting illegally and started building this addition without permits or committee approval on the day that we found out about the third store, a story through the notice of the hearing. The third floor was built in nine days by September the 30th. It was all pre-planned. A stop work order was finally issued. You can see the pictures. So the ones that you're seeing now was actually halfway through. If you could pull up the other pictures, they were, you know, you can see everything was pretty well built in the structure in within nine days. This was clearly a strategy to limit neighborhood input and have people accept this as a done deal. So there would be no point in objecting. They first approached us on September the 28th to see if we had any concerns when the building was already built. That's also when they approached the other neighbors and collected their little signatures. We believe the owners acted illegally to manipulate the neighbors and prevent them from objecting. There are, however, a large number of, of, of objections that we were able to gather in the few days um, once we actually realized what was going on. So we object to all three variances. The resulting house does not fit into the neighborhood and severely impacts our privacy. These variances need to be considered with the unique location of the rear extension of this property. It is on a hill sloping south and east, and the hill itself is almost two stories high. So that third floor is like five stories. It is very visible from Glenfern Avenue. It faces directly onto the side of our house. Our house is over 120 years old and has four windows facing the extension. One now is completely covered by a garage that they built as part of this redevelopment. Regarding the floor index and the height variances, so I want to speak to all three variances. So those two together. Because of the size of the lot, this is a double lot compared to our lot and many of the other lots in the area. So when you're comparing GFI, you need to consider that. And, and the fact also that they're using a flat roof design, they extended the building. They did not just slightly increase the, the footprint. Uh, the original house was much smaller. The, um, the the floor index variance is needed to make this this building possible. Flat roof, in particular, up to the height limit of the bylaw, makes the house look even bigger. This bylaw was set for sloped roof houses. Other houses in the area that come up to that that height have peaks, not flat roofs. So the house looks enormous and boxy from where we sit and from the street. The structure is nothing like any building in the surrounding area. It looks like a little apartment building actually from, from where we sit. Regarding the, um, the deck variants, yes, there are other decks, but they are not of this kind. They are, this deck is particularly large and is particularly high. Our privacy has already been severely impacted by other change that they have made to the property. Two significant trees were cut down. They were not declared to the city and they were, but they were drawn on the site survey. So you can look, you know, with your materials, so you can see there were in fact three trees drawn in, all of which were cut down and nobody from the uh, uh, forestry department came to have a look. Also, we're concerned about the, the large windows, a large floor to ceiling window faces us on the third floor. 
And we're also concerned about noise. There's an entertainment area planned for the back. There's already a, a fireplace uh, roughed in on the side of the garage, right beside our two bedrooms. Uh, the owner let us know that he was planning to put a hot tub and a pool there as well. Um, contrary to dark drawings that have been submitted, which show that as green space. So adding to that, these, this rooftop um, deck, which is really designed for entertainment, will make matters a lot worse for us. And the reason we think that the deck is going to be used for entertainment is because it is so large and because the owners are going to want to show off this house to their friends and to their neighbors and, and encourage them to do something similar. The, um, from the, from the deck, uh, sorry, from the deck and from the top floor, the owners and whoever's on that deck can see our house from front to back as our pictures show. We can't be in our backyard, on our back deck, on our front porch, or on our front terrace without looking directly at that and them potentially looking at us. A bit of screening can be taken down at any time. So I don't, I don't really accept that as a, a viable solution. It does not address the windows. It does not address the height. And um, these, these particular owners are not completely forward. They are, they are very underhanded. And I wouldn't really trust any. Okay, I'll ask you please to summarize your over your five minutes. Could you please summarize? Okay, well, in summary, I think this whole thing should be rejected. The precedent is a really big concern to us because 22 and 14 did not object. They also back on to us. 14 is also on the hill and they're going to potentially do the exact same thing if you accept this. And I'd like to point out number 10, which is down at the bottom of the hill, did object. Number 10, okay. Monroe Park. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Just to, just to put something in perspective, like we don't deal with the trees here. And if they want to cut the tree or not to cut, is up, up to the forestry to take care of that. As far as the building, the builders built and to sell and not living there, unfortunately, is not our concern because they don't, we don't, if they didn't have these variances, they wouldn't be here and you wouldn't be here. All we look at is the variances. And yes, you made a comment about the top floor, the, uh, the deck, which we questioned the size of it and above, but, uh, but as far as the builders not, uh, not living there is really, uh, is really, is not that we don't care about it, because it's not our concern. We're not, our, our term of reference does not include that kind of uh, uh, changes, only the variances. So we have the next uh, variant, the next, uh, next one, that's it. So you're the last one because the, uh, Bruce is not there, and Eva, you, you were there. Okay, thank you. I'll see if uh, members have any questions. Any question for the speaker? So we'll call back the agent. Uh, Mr. Nilligan, could you please come back and address some of those concerns? Yes, absolutely. And, and uh, although you, you did address that it's not relevant, um, my clients do live in the, in, in the home. Um, they have four young children in the local school, and, and this is, uh, as mentioned, this is the home that they intend to live in. Um, the, the first speaker referred to the Queen Street Eat Visioning Study, which, which I'm quite familiar with, and, and know that the study area applies to urban design guidelines along Queen Street, and it's not relevant to the questions of minor variances on, on, on the internal uh, Monroe Park Road. Um, she also raised concerns about building monster homes and an impact on climate change. And that's precisely why I, I mentioned that this is a, a choice by the client to renovate an existing home and, and to make it, uh, you know, uh, an improvement on, on an existing matter and not a replacement, not a, a new build. It, it, uh, it does have uh, climate change concerns in, 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 in simply making additions to existing homes rather than tearing them down and building again. Um, I understand the concerns of, of Ms. Kralitz, uh, who is most impacted by this uh, application. Um, certainly her concerns with respect to uh, windows and noise are, are not related to the variances being sought here. Um, the, the removal of trees, there are no trees being proposed to run for these three variances. And, and she's concerned about, you know, being able to see her house from, from this rear deck. And, and quite frankly, that's, the reality of living in an urban condition in the city of Toronto. Every every rear deck, every rear window, every house 
living cheek by jowl in the city uh, creates some sort of impacts on, on privacy and, and, and surely um, that, that can't be prevented, but it can be mitigated as, as I've recommended as a potential condition for this committee seek to, to approve this application. Um, the uh, question of, of fit, uh, certainly, as, as mentioned in my um, presentation, the FSI being sought is well within the range of rules in the neighborhood. Uh, the, the proposal fits within the permitted length, depth, setbacks. setbacks. It's not a, a, a case of an overbuild or building a long town. It's specifically designed to fit within the existing community and specifically designed to um, respect the existing design of the house, uh, which, which already fits it, fits well within its surroundings. Um, so um, I will respectfully disagree with the, the comments of the client's neighbors and, and uh, reiterate my position that each of these three variances fits um, the four tests of the Planning Act and uh, should be approved. Thank you. Uh, I'm happy to answer any of any of your questions. Thank you. Uh, members, any question for this uh, speaker? Mr. Klassen, please. Yes, just a question to the uh, applicant. You mentioned privacy screening. Could you just tell us where that would be installed? Okay, well, the, the um, proposal already uh, contemplates um, planters on the south edge of the balcony, uh, which were recommended by, by some staff and, and included by, by my client. Um, if there are uh, concerns about overlook onto the properties on Glenfern, then um, you know, a, a very common uh, condition that it's imposed by, by the committee is to attach opaque screening, um, which my client is happy to do on the western side of the uh, of, of the balcony. Um, typically, those those screens are are set at about 1.5 meters, and we'd be happy to to comply with that if, if this committee thinks it's necessary. And as as being shown on the on the screen right now, those are the planters that have been included in the plans. Um, which are, uh, I believe, about four feet high, um, and and we can either can continue that condition on the on the um, western side, so the the top of that diagram, or or include additional privacy screening if if you feel it's necessary. Thank you. Thank you. Any any other question? <clears throat> if not, can I have a motion, please? Ms. Sankar. <coughs> Hi, through you, Mr. Chair, you know, I've listened quite a bit to what the debutants have had to say, as well as the agent and in looking at this application at 1st glance, I thought this was pretty excessive. Um, the, deb the debutants actually have uh, made quite a bit of, um, even though it's 3 variances, I, I feel that. Their testimonies about how this impacts the neighborhood and themselves um, really convinces me that this is not characteristic for that neighborhood. I don't believe it's minor whatsoever, and I don't believe it meets the four tests. For that reason, I'll put forward a motion to refuse this application. A motion to refuse application number 38. Do we have a second? No second, so can I have another motion, please? Mr. Bartolo? Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, to like my colleague, I've listened to everything that everybody said here today. Uh, I'm of the opinion that it, it's generally uh, minor in nature, with the exception of variance number three. While it it is admittedly a nice design feature, like numerically, it's over five times uh, what's permitted. So I'm going to put forward a motion to approve this application uh, or approve variances one and two, and uh, refuse variance number three. Thank you. Second. Ms. Sankar seconding it. Thank you. All in favor? Opposed? Mr. Klassen is opposing. So your application is approved and uh, except for number three. So one and two are approved. And uh, that's it. There's no other condition there. Thank you. Number 39, which is 43 Russell Hill, Application number 39, 
43 Russell Hill Road. And here we have uh, the agent, uh, Michael Goldberg. Are you there? Mr. Chair, if I may. Yes. Uh, I've been advised that uh, Mr. Christian Chan will no longer be, be making a, uh, he's withdrawing his request to uh, speak with this item and Mr. Stephen Mason is not present. Okay, so Stephen Mason is not there and Christian does not, Christian Chan does not speak. So all we have is Michael Goldberg, right? That's correct. Okay, Michael Goldberg, are you there? Mr. Goldberg? Uh, yes, I'm there, sir. Okay, can you please state your name and address for the records here for the system? Michael Goldberg, Goldberg Group, 2098 Avenue Road, um, Toronto, M5, M5, M4, A8. Thank you. So here we have uh, six variances. Uh, the material we have here is from March, May, June, etc., and T-Lab appeal. Could you please give us a, a, a small presentation covering all those changes and tell us where we're going from here? Okay, sir. So um, the uh, variance that was before committee in July uh, that is now under appeal had six variances. There are now uh, four variances, um, and I'd like to request, and you see on the screen, that's the current variance list, the four variances that are before you. And I would like to request that variance number one be that the proposed height is 17.63 meters, not 20.33 meters. And the reason for that is, sir, the, this was a very contentious item before committee in July. The only contentious aspect that was discussed and debated and canvassed in the July hearing was a rooftop terrace. So all aspects of this application relating to the rooftop terrace in this current application has been removed. So everything that is proposed here relates to the roof line down of the existing dwelling. So, for instance, there is um, uh, not four stories proposed now because the rooftop terrace was considered a story. There's only three. There's a small addition of two stories to match the existing roof line in the northeast corner of the building. The um, It's rather technical in nature relating to the rear landscaping because the very nature of this lot, the existing house is situated at the very, very back of the property. So uh, the side yard um, on the west side of the building is considered uh, to be the rear yard. That entire front yard is basically entirely landscaped. So, and um, we are not adding to the overall footprint of the house, just filling in a notch at the northeast corner of it. So, sir, um, the, the matter, um, of the first application remains under appeal at T-Lab. Um, um, if this application is approved today, in a practical sense, it will just allow the other uncontentious matters um, to proceed, the homeowner to proceed with the interior renovations and the small addition. Um, and if this application is not appealed, then we will be able to withdraw the other variances uh, from the T-Lab so that when we get to the T-Lab, the only variance and the only aspect of the application that will need to be canvassed relates to the rooftop terrace. Um, and I'll just emphasize, as indicated earlier, the only contentious item in the July hearing was the rooftop terrace, and this application has nothing to do with that at all. So I believe it's it's a it's an efficient use of both not only the committees but also the um, the T Labs time uh, and resources. Um, it allows us to narrow issues uh, and allows the homeowner the practical ability to proceed with those elements of the renovation that were not in contention whatsoever back in July. So those are my submissions. I, I believe that all four tests of section 41 uh, 
41 of the uh, uh, 45 one, I'm sorry, of the Planning Act have been uh, satisfactorily addressed and I'd be pleased to answer any questions. Okay, thank you. So the, um, the former six variances have now been changed and in front of us, there's only the, this four here, is that correct? Correct, sir. Okay. All right. Any uh, any question to this uh, speaker? We don't have any other speaker, just the agent. Mr. Bartolo? Yeah, just to confirm a couple of things there, uh, Mr. Speaker, from my review of the drawings, uh, the vast majority of the building is an existing three-story and there's no additional height being added, correct? Correct, sir. And because it uh, on the hatched areas show uh, roof lines kind of merging with the existing. And the uh, the ex the um, landscape areas are as per the existing condition, correct? Yes, sir. That's all I needed. Thank you. Okay. Any other question? If not, can I have a motion, please? Mr. Bartolo, please go ahead. Yep. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, in reviewing this application, uh, Mr. Chair, well, it, it seems a little unusual, but it's on it's on quite a lot, and the topography uh, affects part of it as well. And uh, given that it's uh, making use of an existing building in an addition, uh, I'm going to uh, put forward a motion uh, to approve this application. There's no conditions. Okay. Can I have a second, please? Ms. Sankar? Uh, I thought, Mr. Chair. Huh? Mr. Chair, I thought there was a change to the first variance. Oh, you're, you're sorry. I apologize. Um, yeah, yeah. I had it here in my notes. Thank yeah, you're right. You're thank right. you. I'll amend. I will amend uh, my, the, the uh, motion. my motion there. I'm sorry, it's been a long day. <laughs> um, so I'll start over to approve yeah. this application subject to the following change that variance number one uh, be changed from 20.33 meters to 17.36 meters. 17, yeah, okay. Yeah, thank okay. you for catching that. Thanks, Mr. Klassen. And uh, second, Ms. Sankar, all in favor? Okay, your application is approved for those four variances with the change of uh, variance number one as you made. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Application number 40, which is 1973 Avenue Road. And here we have Chris Marchese as the agent. Mr. Marchese, could you come back, please? Yes, good, uh, good afternoon, Mr. Chair and fellow committee members. My name is Chris Marchese. Address is 900 the East Mall, Suite 300. Thank you. You're, you're ahead of me. Okay, so we have uh, two more speakers here. And uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Uh, moderator, are the two, uh, two other speakers uh, uh, present? Uh, Mr. Chair, I believe Sheila Harrison is still present. However, Dr. Raymond Ning and Danny Mui are not present. Are not. Okay, thank you. So we have one more speaker here. And therefore, Mr. Marchese, we need you to make a, a presentation. We have here, this is to, a variance to reduce the parking. And uh, only, only one variance. We have a number of letter, letter of objections. So could you please give us a short presentation of five minutes and we'll, we'll start now. Yeah, through you, Mr. Chair, um, there are two letters of objection on file and the latter two people that the moderator has stated are actually our clients on um, following along today, but not actually in opposition, Mr. Danny Moy and the doctor associated as well. Um, but nonetheless, good afternoon, sir, chair and fellow committee members. My name is Chris Marchese and I am a planner at Design Plan Services. We have been retained by the property owners of 1973 and 1975 Avenue Road to provide justification in support of this committee of adjustment application in front of you today. The application is to permit reduced parking on the subject property to pr permit one parking space where nine is required, which is associated with the proposed uses on the subject pro property. Um, as seen on the submitted plan, the subject property is gonna have two uses, both which are permitted. First, a retail store at the grand, ground level, totaling 515 square meters, and medical offices in the basement floor and second floor um, accordingly. 
The resulting parking requirements for a medical office is 3.89 spaces and 5.15 spaces for the retail store. The application was previously deferred in February 2021 to consult with transportation department to ensure that there's adequate alternative transportation and off-site parking in order to su support such variance. Since the time of deferral, the property owner has retained TransPlan, a transportation engineer, to conduct a parting parking study on the subject property. A terms of reference was provided by the City of Toronto transportation staff, and we have confirmed that the parking study provided is acceptable and that the parking reduction will have no adverse impacts. I've also submitted that um, email from transportation staff to confirm that they no longer have any issues with this proposal. The parking study demonstrates that there are multiple comparisons for reduced parking within close proximity of the site. That there's adequate public transit available within close proximity and that there's also adequate on street and off street public parking spaces available within close proximity of the subject site. In total, there are 189 spaces of on street and off street public parking available and at its peak usage of about 70% at its busiest time, there are still a surplus of 45 spaces available. The medical offices will have a patients by appointment only, and there will be no walk-ins or family doctors located on the site. and And the uh, and the doctor will be a specialist um, existing and and that's located on the property. There will usually be one doctor on site at a time who will see one to two patients per an hour for a maximum of approximately fourteen patients per day. This proposal will not create a large amount of human pedestrian activity. And as stated within the transportation report, um, will not cause any adverse parking issues on the subject property or within the surrounding area. Based on the provided justification, I am of the opinion that this variance being proposed on the subject property meets the four test and should ultimately be approved. And I'll be happy to answer any questions at this time. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, we'll uh, we'll be back to you after we hear uh, we hear the other speaker. We have here Sheila Harrison. Are you there? Yes, I'm here. Okay, so please tell us your name and your address. Okay, my name is Sheila Harrison, and I reside at 118 Felbrig Avenue and oh. 5M2 M5. Thank you. So tell us, please, what's your concern about this application? We'll give you your five okay, minutes. Okay, well, okay, thank you very much, Mr. Chair. I, I am a director of the South Armour Heights Residents Association. Uh, and as you know, SARA actively monitors and responds to committee of adjustment applications, both residential within our inner streets and on Upper Avenue, which is our main street, as it also is impacting on the character of our neighborhood. The 1973-1975 Avenue Road application involves variances as they cannot provide parking spaces to support the parking requirements of their staff, patients, and customers. This situation is annoying in that we believe the, under, the owner understood uh, what the parking requirements were for medical premises before he started this renovation, uh, yet he proceeded hoping not to be challenged. This situation is just another addition of the no parking uh, allowances for the medical operation, in addition to other significant re redevelopments that we've had, which you've also approved for no parking. For medical clinics, we have a large number of wellness operations that have opened up on uh, Upper Avenue. And as well, we have six cannabis operations, which have no parking requirement. All the shops and services have to share the Green Pea parking lot at Brook and Row. And I would mention that we know that 40%, 48% of those spots are already held by monthly permit holders, often by the owners and operators of the shops in the area themselves. Uh, and then there's a small uh, parking lot down by McDonald's, the bus loop. There's Avenue Road street parking, and then there's the side street parking, but all this is cumulative in terms of the demand. The residents are already seeing more illegal parking on the side streets. So often the first street in is, is not allowed for parking during the day, but also we've noticed that the workers 
at the Avenue Road sites are parking further in on the residential streets so that they get beyond the no parking areas. It's very, very noticeable. Uh, we have asked in the past, and with this case, that Transportation Services asked at least for payment in lieu of parking uh, so that we receive some funding uh, for, we're told we need that in order to get some future parking studies for Upper Avenue. But in this case, they've chosen not to even submit a report on this variance. So obviously they aren't putting forward a suggestion for uh, payment in lieu of parking. According to shops and services on Avenue Road, and if you're present at community consultation meetings about new developments, you're very vocal, there is a major problem with parking. We will look to transportation services in the future to respond to the owners and operators of those premises uh, when the cumulative parking hits the saturation points then their businesses will start to suffer as their customers go elsewhere to avoid our parking problem. In terms of the four tests, in our opinion, this application does not reflect the general intent and purpose of the official plan, nor the zoning bylaws. And it eventually is not going to be desirable or appropriate uh, for our commercial establishments on Upper Avenue. Thank you very much for hearing our case. Thank you. Um, please wait, see if there are any questions. Uh, members, any question for this uh, speaker? <clears throat> if not, uh, Mr. Marchese, can you come back, please? Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Can you, can and you address you, that? Harrison. Can you address the concerns there? Yeah, no problem. So, um, first and foremost, in regards to 48 spots being permit holders, um, the, the assessment was done by a professional transportation engineer and dealt specifically and directly with the transportation service department from the city of Toronto. The two of them have, of professionals have come together to um, issue this report. The information within has been accepted by the city of Toronto to confirm that there are 189 on and off street parking, public parking spaces available and that the surplus is 45. Um, in regards to payment in lieu, um, there is actually an initiative uh, put forward by the City of Toronto staff in January of 20. Parking rates across the City of Toronto um, and, and maybe introduce maximum parking rates instead of minimum parking rates. So um, times have been changing and alternative alternative uh, methods of transportation and and modes of transportation are being considered by the City of Toronto and uh, reduction of, of parking is. Um, on the uprise and is a popular thing in today's day and age. And I think that's why there is no request for payment in lieu on this property. Um, Ms. Harrison noted that she dared to rely on transportation services. And in this regard, after this report was done over a lengthy, lengthy eight month process due to COVID, um, transportation services have come back now where originally they did have opposition and have said that they no longer have any opposition to the single variance that's being proposed today. So all in all, um, it's a minor parking reduction and is, is in keeping with, with recent redevelopment in, in regards to reduction of parking spaces in this neighborhood. will have no adverse impact on the inner communities or along Avenue Road itself and ultimately should be approved by the Committee of Adjustment in my opinion, but I'll be happy to answer any other questions at this time. Thank, Thank you. you. Any, uh, any question? If not, can I have a motion please? Mr. Klassen. Mr. Chair, um, I listened to the speakers and uh, I reviewed the comments and the policies of the city and the consultation study and I'm, and I'm, I'm, I, will, I will move to approve this application. I think there is parking and there are other ways and it's a service that people can choose to go to or, or not. So I think it might be different for uh, a different use, but I think in this case, it's appropriate. So I'll move to approve this application. And there is no conditions. Thank you. Uh, second, Mr. I had Bush seconds at the same time. 
Okay, Miss Sankar, second. All in favor? Okay. Sir, your, your application is unanimously approved. Thank you, Mr. Chair and fellow committee members. Have yourself a great evening. Thank you. Application number 41, which is 114 <coughs> Ellerslie Avenue. And here we have just one speaker, the agent, Mr. Franco Romano. Are you there? Yes, good afternoon, Mr. Chairman. Franco Romano, Action Planning Consultants, 2095 Autumn Breeze for credit. Thank you. Okay, we have here, um, we have here like uh, one, uh, just one variance. Uh, staff report has three conditions, which are basically just limiting the coverage. And uh, according to site plan, the counselor supports the staff report and there's 11 letters of support. Uh, members, do we need a presentation here? There's no other speaker. Do we need the presentation? No. Okay, Mr. Romano, we don't need the presentation. Do you want to say or add something before we move to the to the decision. Thank you, sir. Just to uh, support the staff recommendations, that's exactly what's being proposed. So I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you. So, any question? If no questions, can I have a motion, Ms. Sankar? Yes. Yes. Uh, just willing to move to a motion. Um, I'm agreeing. Um, I'm happy that the agent is agreeing with the staff conditions with the numbers of letters of support from the counselor and from neighboring communities. I find that this is a very straightforward application. I'll put forward a motion to approve this application and make it subject to the September 29th staff report. I'll just read that out just in case the lot coverage of the existing dwelling will be limited to 27.5% of the lot area and the lot coverage of the proposed rear yard covered patio to be limited to 6.6% of the lot area, that the sides of the proposed rear yard covered patio remain open and unenclosed, and that the proposal be sub constructed substantially in accordance with the site plan drawing and west and east elevation drawing submitted to the committee. And that's my motion, thank you. Thank you. Second, Mr. Bartolo seconding, all in favor? Okay. So, Mr. Romano, your application is unanimously approved, subject to those conditions of the uh, staff conditions. Thank you kindly. Appreciate it. Enjoy okay. your evening. Thank you. Okay, we have 42, application number 42, which is uh, 295 Broadway Avenue. And here we have... Uh, Mr. Moderator, is Jay Smith around? Hello, Mr. Chair. Jay Smith, agent for 295 Broadway Avenue. My address is 2814 Hollington Crescent. Well, just a second. Are you, you're Jay Smith. Are you the agent? I am. Okay, so who's, 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 uh, who's Marco uh, Rotundo? That I don't know. Well, we had him registered here as the agent. Um, 42, we're talking about... Uh, eh? Eleven Elders Lee, yeah? We're having a, we're having a mistake here in the um, in the addresses. Are you um, are you are you representing uh, two ninety five Broadway Avenue, sir, Mr. Smith? Are you representing two ninety five? I, I am, Mr. Chair. Yes. Okay. Okay. Well, we have we have some problem here. This was registered as eleven Elder Brook. So so okay. So let's um, let's take a look at that one. And so we have no other person uh, here. Uh, this we have to widen uh, driveway. Staff report has a condition 
to provide materials for the driveway, like a permeable. I don't know if you saw that. The transportation. I did, no, Mr. Chair. Okay, the transportation has no objection, and forestry has condition number one. Uh, members, do we need the presentation here? No? Okay. Sir, we don't need the presentation, and uh, if you have anything else to add, we can move to the uh, decision. I have nothing to add. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Okay, so uh, if you have any question, if not, can I have a motion, please? Ms. Sankar, did you have a question or motion? Uh, motion, Mr. Yes. Chair. Please go ahead. Um, I feel that this uh, does meet the four tests. I mean, it's pretty evident in terms of uh, my review of this application. I'll make it subject. I'll, I'll motion to approve this application, make it subject to the September 21st staff report that permeable uh, materials be used for the proposed driveway. I'll also make it subject to forestry and given transport has no conditions or no objections. That would be my motion. Thank you. Thank you. Second. Mr. Bartolo seconding all in favor. Okay. Unanimously, sir, your application is unanimously approved subject to that staff report condition and forestry. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. So I don't know. Who Application number 43, which is 45 Addison Crescent. Forty-three, forty-five Addison Crescent. And here we have Michael Shirzadraf. Are you there? Good afternoon, Mr. Chair and committee members. My name is Michael Shirzadfar. I'm the agent on behalf of the homeowners at 45 Addison Crescent. And your address, your own address? My own address is 3 Mary Terrence Court, Markham, Ontario, L6B0B1. Thank you. So here we have a new dwelling, four variances. Staff report has only a condition, west and east elevation drawing, to, and forestry condition number two. Nothing else. There is no, nobody's, um, nobody's registering. So members, do we need the presentation here? No? Okay. Sir, we don't need the presentation. Unless you have anything to add, we'll move to the decision. At this time, Mr. Chair, no. Thank you. So, any a question first? If no question, can I have a motion, please? Mr. Bartolo? Yes, uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Given that there's no opposition, and this is relatively straightforward, and I believe minor in nature, I'm going to put forward a motion to approve this application subject that the exterior main wall height uh, be developed substantially in accordance with the west and east elevation drawing attached to the report submitted September 30th, 2021, and subject to the conditions of the ur urban forestry memo attached. Thank you. Second, Ms. Sankar seconding, all in favor? Okay, thank you. Your application is unanimously approved subject to that condition and the forestry as well. Thank you. Thank you. Application number 44, 44, uh, Jay Smith, are you here again? 12? I am, I am 12? Mr. Chair. Jay okay, Smith. that's for 12 over bank, right? Yes, sir. Okay, now we have here some, uh, some residents was, uh, Mr. Moderator, do we have anybody listed here? Uh, we do not. We do not. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Smith, you're the only one. Uh, we have here, um, uh, this is just an addition to the rear, to the north, rear, northwest portion, one, one variance, TRCA, no objection, and one letter of support. Members, do we need the presentation? No. Thank you. Sir, we don't need the presentation. Can we move to the, to the decision or do you have something to say? Uh, nothing to say. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Okay. So, Mr. Uh, Klassen? Yes. Uh, uh, I'd like to to move to approve this application. It, it does meet all, uh, all the four tests. Thank, Thank you. you. There's no conditions. Second, Mr. Bartolo, all in favor? Okay. Your uh, Your application is approved. 
and uh, no condition unanimously approved. And you're you're the last one. Thank you, here. Mr. Chairman. You're the last one here. You should you should buy a lottery lottery uh, ticket. I may do that. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Have a good <laughs> evening. <laughs> okay. Thank you. All right, members. Do do I have a, a motion to uh, terminate? Ms. Sankar, to terminate, and secondly, Mr. Klassen, all in favor? Okay, we're terminating at uh, 5, uh, 524. Thank you.